here. Okay, it's uh, giving me time to computers having get a fun all time with, uh, with us feeding from the Discord. It doesn't always allow us to move. <laughs> So we look like we're frozen. We're frozen in contemplation. Yes. Oh, well, actually, some of us aren't. Some of us aren't. Some of us aren't. Some Maybe. of us aren't. Nope. All right. So, can everyone hear us? Nope. My typing is probably loud enough to wake the cows. <laughs> it is. Yep, it's coming through. Okay, perfect. All right, well, um, I don't know why I'm frozen, but... Oh, that's really annoying. I think my computer just has to catch up to that, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so, uh, we're slightly frozen, but you know, that's okay. We will stop being frozen in just a minute. And, uh, so I will introduce myself. My name is Sam and my Twitter handle is DM Samuel, which is why it says Castle Keeper DM Samuel, uh, because I made that Twitter handle a long time ago. Anyway, uh, and so I am here for the first episode of a Castles and Crusades actual play campaign, which I have named the Pools of Narhite. And Narhite is one of the deities in the world of Aird, which is the uh, sort of default setting for, or the, the house setting for Troll Lord games for the Castles and Crusades game. Um, it's not really the default setting because the book, the, the rule book doesn't really have a default setting. It, it leaves it wide open for anyone to put whatever setting they want in there. Uh, but in any case, Aird is the house setting, and so that's the setting that we are playing in. And Narhite is a sort of um, malicious trickster god who is one of the old gods. And so uh, take that for what you will, given that uh, his name is in the name of the campaign. Um, and so I would like my players to introduce themselves and... Uh, you can just say your name and what kind of character you're playing, and anything you want to tell us about your character is fine with me. Uh, my name is Matt. Uh, I'll be playing uh, Xenolestimus Fay, uh, who is a human monk. Uh, his friends call him Zeno. Uh, he's kind of a mystery in what he's doing uh, here in, in Delafin. Uh, he's looking for his parents. Uh, he has he was abandoned at a young age in a monastery. Uh, he has a letter and a little metal gorgon pin. Uh, so he is in the area searching for his family. Uh, my name is Matt, and uh, my Discord is Grape Ape. Excellent. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm playing uh, Leonie's Wallander, who is a female high elf. She's actually an Oralu, so she's playing Alf as a as a, um, as a character and as a class. And she's ended up on the island uh, by accident. Her boat suffered damage in a storm, and they ended up in the port. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Alex. I'm playing uh, Bert Longfellow, it's a halfling rogue. Um, Quite a rotund halfling rogue, even as halflings go. But um, he ended up on the island of Adelphin, or the town of Adelphin, sorry. Because um, he was uh, on the run, he uh, got in trouble, got caught pickpocketing in the, in the town he was in. So he just hopped on the first ship he could and uh, ended up here. Um, I'm George. Uh, I go by Ultra Magnus. And. Uh, I will be playing Jake Tildor. He grew up on the island on a local cabbage farm. He uh, found his father's uh, adventuring equipment and realized he was going to follow in his father's footsteps, wherever his father may be, and become one of the clerics of Durandale. Durandale being a, a lawful good god with a blazing uh, 
fiery red bastard sword on his armor. And uh, he's going to take up the perfection and <clears throat> perfection and armor and weapons and things like that as a cleric and follow through and maybe even fi find out what happened to his father or just become an awesome adventurer as he should be in his own right. And I'm playing uh, Robert and I'm playing Reckvik Sourbeard, a dwarven rune mark. He grew up on this island outside the uh, city um, on, oddly enough, a cabbage farm. Um, doesn't much care for farming. Likes, you know, potion making and all that kind of stuff and the blacksmithing stuff that he gets exposed to. He's about five foot six, so he looks even odder as a dwarf because he's very tall and kind of skinny and gangly for a dwarf. That's all I need to know now. Okay, and so uh, which of you know each other? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the background trying to fix our, our video issue, so keep talking. <laughs> uh, Jake and I know each other, and I could yeah. very well get every, every one of the other ones on the docks or in the town if they were at the port. <clears throat> our family tended to go and help ships come into port and at the founder, at the flag from the shop and all that kind of stuff. So it could be a way to kind of tie us all together if we want. That's up to you. I think that would work well, you know. Yeah. That the halfling came to town to get some of our, our awesome cabbage and <laughs> things like that. Don't we have like a sour sauerkraut factory or something like that? Well, that's <laughs> what my family's known for is their amazing sauerkraut and yeah. other fermented foods. We really need to go into more brats and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah. well, we got to get that from the other cows and pig farmers. We don't really specialize in animals. We have a farm. There we go. So really, that's our first adventure is going out there and expanding our business horizons and goals. Mm. Like it. There we go. But the one thing you have to know is Sour Beard brand is never sold off the island as Sour Beard. Oh, on the island is known as Sour Beard. Otherwise, it's sold through a separate distributor, distributor renamed to something else. So there's no attention brought to the the dwarves. At least this my family. Yeah, not that it doesn't happen, but you know, it's not supposed to happen. You could be the sausage kings of of Chicago or something. That would so, be quite. Elephant, elephant. Yes. <laughs> Famous for their dolphin dogs. It's already sounding good. <laughs> we just have to tie the elf into that, along with the uh, the monk. Yeah, the elf will be uh, looking for somewhere to stay because she wasn't intended to be here. <laughs> well, I would have been able to direct you to one of the three taverns because I don't think a dwarves would have invited a, an elf initially to come and stay at their homestead. If I recall correctly, the lore is that elves and dwarves, I don't think they did it with the the Codex or Verger or whatever that aired. Let's get it wrong. Um, does anyone recall from reading any of that if elves and dwarves get along in this setting? Um, uh, they so, do not particularly like each other. Yeah, yeah so they... generally dwarves um, don't like elves that they're not familiar with. They, they kind of have the ability to learn how to like them. Um, and elves are just really aloof and they're... they're um, they don't you probably even really notice that the dwarves don't really like them that much but um so it's not an all-out war they're not they're not having a blood war or anything like that but um they are they don't necessarily get along the greatest right i remember reading in the Ayers handbook they had that but then i think the um Ayers guide to Ayers was a little different with respect i don't think they really brought up any problems with the, the elves specifically which would fit well yeah now 
with respect to Leonis, Leonis? Leonis, yeah. One thing that would might work out is because I tend to be a much more, I'm not a gruff dwarf, I tend to be very sociable. Once again, another dwarf. You're also a tall dwarf, tall, thin dwarf. You could almost be an elf. Yeah, but I have a beard. Yeah, well. <laughs> can't be perfect. <laughs> That's an easy so one to recognize. I, I had to only, only the old races can grow real beards. <laughs> I had to switch how we're displaying the video, but at least now we're all moving. So we look, we look like we're alive, uh, which is yep. a good thing. Um, so, okay. So review for me now again, who, so Jake knows Rekmit. Correct. And, um, Zeno came in on a ship. Did you come in on a ship or did you walk in? Uh, I came by ship. Okay. And the elf's ship crashed or had a major problem. Yep. And Bert was on a ship. Yep. Okay. So. Um, this... Uh, the image on the screen here, and so I will put it on to, uh, so what the, what the audience is looking at right now is a picture of the small area around, um, around Indolofen and, uh, the town is right down there. You can see it's a port town. It's a relatively sort of smallish town, but it has had a burst of growth lately because uh, the shipping business has become very uh, lucrative and popular. Um, the person in charge of this town is named Baron Sayer Craystock, and he has a, a nice little family that lives there, and he sort of runs the town, but really the, the, the word on the street is the people who run the town are, you know, the fishermen and uh, the, the, the ship workers, the dock workers, and, and the people who bring in their shipping. And that means that merchants have quite a bit of power here. Um, the town itself is um, relatively young, but it has had a growth spurt, and it has gone from approximately 200 residents to closer to 400 residents um, but between 50 and 100 of those residents at any given time are this kind of transient people that come in on a ship, stay for a while, and then leave. Um, and uh, even though that happens and that has been happening for a while, recently, say in the past 10 or 20 years, the, uh, the town has started having a much larger permanent population. And the, um, the thing about that is that it's now starting to sort of expand. And so let me put a map of the town on your screen for you. Um, the town looks like this. If I get it to... Maybe I can get it to go. Maybe not. This is where... Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so here is what the town looks like. So let's see if that went up on the screen for you. So here's the yep. town. You can see that there are several little ports on there. Um, there's a little bit of a large castle there. That's the Baron's Castle. And, oh, looks like I lost my picture here. Come on back. It looks like it's popping in and out of different, uh, yeah. Things. Oh, that is not fun. Let's uh, do that again. This. Come on, computer. Okay, well, so here's an easy way to fix this. Uh, let's remove that. And let's put an image in there. Oh, there we go. Now it's back for some reason. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> technical difficulties. I was telling Chuck right before the stream started that this will be the stream where we... Uh, we end up finding all the bugs and we may uh, get rid of a lot of them and we may not. Um, 
But uh, so here's the town. And so uh, this this uh, castle on the hill, as it were, these hashed mark, these hashed lines, those are elevation lines. OK, they're uh, about 40 feet uh, for each line. Um, and so this uh, this castle here is the Baron's house. And you can um, you can see that the um, the side of the of the river sort of to the north that has sort of more spacious ha houses with more spacious land buildings with more more space that's sort of the more uh wealthy part of town and then this area over here to the south is the less wealthy part of town um and um and you can see there's a couple of bridges that that span across so that you can get from one side to the other and there's a few little docks here and there and uh there's a, a lot of housing and a lot of businesses and that's kind of what you know of the town if you're not from here now if you are from here you know what most of these uh, businesses are and if you are not from here you're not sure what the businesses are but if you ask around you find out that there are um three inns in town and um three basic taverns okay the three inns are the rusty anchor inn and tavern the captain's den and the good night and the taverns are the dock rats which is sort of the on the cheap side um templeton's which is mid-priced and lady helen's tea house which is for wealthy people and it's by invitation only um, Lady Helen, by the way, is named after the Baron's wife. The Baron's wife's name is Lady Helen. Um, and so if you want to make your way to, or if you want to meet all of you want to be in one of those taverns, you can discuss amongst yourselves which tavern you want to be in so that we can all come together and finally meet. Uh, Zeno is going to head toward the uh, Rusty Anchor Tavern. Uh, see if the, he's going to kind of sit in the tavern for a minute, kind of gauge the uh, patronage, and then maybe see if he can strike up a conversation with someone to uh, ask about his uh, pin and any refugees that may have came here from the south. Okay, the Rusty Anchor is this building that I'm circling right here. You can see it on your owlbear there. I'm sorry, was the Rusty Anchor an inn or a tavern? It is the Rusty Anchor Inn and Tavern, so it is both. Inn and Tavern. Okay. The, <clears throat> other, the other two inns were the Captain's Den and the Good Night. Um, the Captain's Den is also a tavern. Um, the Good Night is just an inn. And the th of the three taverns, um, none of them are true taverns except dock rats which lets people sort of sleep on the floor it's not really a true inn so does so does that am i hearing then that everyone is going to go to uh the rusty the anchor rusty anchor sounds like a good place if it's have an end of it <laughs> made it cheap yeah make things simple yeah Mick, do you want to go over to that inn? Well, of course we're going to the inn. It might have some of the sour beer ale on tap. It is quite good this year. Though, you would probably have gotten to have a little bit of the special batch from home. Right. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so um, this inn is relatively large it has a large bar and several say five or six round tables in the room it has a, a large hearth that is currently lit to keep the place warm and on the dock outside there are also some tables so they actually have indoor outdoor seating um and uh, and it's a pretty it's pretty subdued right now. It's about midday, and there are not a ton of people in there. But there's probably five or six people in there, um, plus yourselves now. And the um, the person working the bar is named Becker.
So uh, Leonese will walk in and uh, she'll ask Becker, Becker, so I'm looking for a place to stay and some food and, and wine. Is this a suitable place? Of course. This is the best place in town. How could you even mm. ask? Obviously, you came here. So, well, of course, it must the, be the best place. This was the first place I came across. And you always told me it's the best place. Well, I mean, wh why would I tell you to go to some other place? What, what can I get you? Um, let's start with a goblet of wine. If you get any decent wine? Um, well, you know, our specialty is ale. But, um, we have some wine. Uh, your tastes are probably a little more discerning than mine when it comes to wine. I'm a, I'm an ale aficionado, so to speak. Indeed, indeed. Well, uh, let me try the wine. All right. So we, uh, we have two wines right now that are open. I've got a red for you. That's Indolofen's mm. Finest. And I've got a Baron Craystock's last year's white wine. Try and look in the finest. All right. That sounds great. Uh, he, he sort of gets this very nice, uh, well-made, shiny goblet out from under the bar. And he pulls the bottle out and he uncorks it with a loud pop and he pours it sort of gingerly puts it in front of you and and watches expectantly to see what you think of this particular libation. He's all take a sip of it after a little sniff and looks at it and it's actually quite palatable. Very surprising. Yeah, it unfortunately has a little bit of a not-so-great aftertaste. <laughs> so... Uh, the thing about that is, is that as long as you're taking a fresh drink, it tastes good. It's only the aftertaste that's bad. So <laughs> that, that'll, that'll ho hopefully, you know, you'll, that means you'll just keep drinking it, right? Keep drinking. Exactly. There's a way to solve that. <laughs> um, so is everyone else already there or are you going to come in individually? Well, I figure the cleric and I all kind of saunter on in at some point. Because I'll run up to Becker and say, hey, you guys got any stuff for the back I can take back to the farm? Any refuse and leftover stuff? So uh, typically we'll go from the taverns back for the compost yeah. pile. I mean, you know, I, I I had some other people asking about that, but uh, but yeah, you, you can take it as long as you don't as, as long as, as you don't tell the boss. You know, he gets kind of mad sometimes. Oh, come on. You know the boss likes our family. That's why we bring you guys the good stuff. I know, I know, but he keeps threatening me that I don't charge you for it. That's why we bring you ale. You got either the sour beard uh, black ale still on tap? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Not very much, though. It sells really good, but I got, I got enough for you. I always have some for you. He, pour, he pours some. Puts a big frothy mug in front of you. The clerk's name. Say that again. <laughs> I don't remember the cleric's name. Oh. Hey, 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 do you want a, want a little mug, too? Yeah, of course. All right. One for my friend, too. Excellent, excellent. Brewing has a lot of fun. <laughs> he, he puts it on the bar. Uh, Bert will uh, come on in be like, uh, you know, my, my stomach is rumbling. Looking for some food. What you got? Uh, well, you know, we got, we got, uh, some boar tips and, and we got some, uh, potatoes and there's a cabbage stew and we have, uh, some, some fresh carrots. And of course, always we have some, uh, nice fresh bread and some cheeses. Oh, some potatoes, some cabbage stew, some bread, some cheese. I'll take some of all of it. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, if you have a seat, I'll, I'll, I'll have, I'll have Otten bring it out. Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, did you want something to drink? Uh, I'll take a mug of ale, whatever you've got on uh, on tap here. Uh, he looks at Reckman and says, you, you think he could handle uh, your your good drink? I'll even buy it for him. Excellent. Oh, oh, excellent. He he gets out 
the same size mug he's been giving everybody else, and he pours it to the top and sets it on the bar. Oh, thank you very much. He says, I'll, I'll, let me go put your order in. I'll be right back. And he goes back behind uh, the doorway. There's a little curtain over the doorway, and he goes back behind there, and you can hear him yelling at somebody. So right about now, there's there's about four or five other patrons in there, and they were watching this entire exchange and watching that sort of group of you file in kind of in smaller groups and and now that now that he's gone into the back they they kind of turn away because they don't want to be you know they're trying to pretend like they're not watching anymore but they're pretty nosy i look over at the halfling and i'm like you are going to love this stuff this is the best i'll take a take a few sips and i'll be like oh yeah this is actually, this is really good. And I'll, uh, you say uh, you made this? Uh, he made it, the big guy over there. Oh, I didn't actually make it. It's made on my homestead. Ah. I helped in the brewing, but, you know, picking of the hops and stuff. <laughs> family. I, I don't like my hands. In it. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a wonderful stuff. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of. Bourbon Jake, you look at all the locals, all whispering about us, trying to watch the business, small towns. So Zeno has been kind of sitting in the corner at a table by himself, watching everybody, trying to size up uh, who he's going to try to approach. And uh, I'm hoping he might notice these four guys watching the uh, interactions at the bar. Uh, I'm going to go over to the table of the four people and uh, introduce myself. Would you mind if I had a seat with you? Of course not. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, barmaid, can I get a glass of hot water, please? Uh, 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 coming, coming right up. So, water? I've heard some rumors. Oh, yes. I, I'm a tea drinker myself. Uh, I, I heard a rumor that there were a green glow over some of the lands around here. Do any of you happen to know Don and Pike? Our balance is a no. Um... Rekmit has a chance of knowing Don and Pike. Uh, why don't you roll me a percentage dice? Ready. It's going to be a 35. Um, nope, you don't know him. You know of the family that's a farming family, but you're not real familiar with him particularly. Uh, have you fellows seen any Weird, uh, green glowing lights in the area. Oh, I heard the Baron was looking for... What was that about the Baron? Well, so... Uh, do you happen to know where Half Hill is located? Yeah. Uh, Half Hill is about, uh, it's a couple few miles above or north of. Um, oh, Half Hill. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Half Hill. So oh, actually, there it is. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, a, it's a few miles from town. What, maybe 10 miles north of here? 10, 15 ish? I, I've heard. Uh, Tales of a strange glowing light, a green light above Half Hill. Some people say it's cursed. People say a lot of strange things on this island. So as you're chatting, um, Lucy, the 
the barmaid there. She she comes back with a big pitcher of water and a small glass for you to put the water in. And Becker comes out with a big platter of food. Um, and it has three different types of uh, breads on it and three different types of cheeses and a, a bunch of carrots and potatoes and a bowl of cabbage stew. And uh, he sets it right in the middle of the table, uh, but kind of pushes it just ever so slightly uh, over to the halfling. Uh, can I get anything else for y'all? So Lenny needs to look at this. It's like, yeah, I'll take some bread and cheese. Uh, that looks good. You, you're not going to share that one? Um, I think that's the halflings. I suppose we can share a small amount of it, but a good majority, I think, will be mine. Oh, well, uh, I'll, I'll have Otten uh, start making another platter then. And he runs Just... off. I was wondering if you were going to be a hungry, hungry halfling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd say he was a little chubby. Hearty. <laughs> <laughs> A hearty halfling, indeed. Looks like the rest of my family. Just a little bit... Uh, sure. Yeah. Zeno pulls some tea leaves out of his uh, pack and uh, begin brewing a nice cup of tea. Selene is all good. It's like, you, know, you say you heard a rumor, so... Had some interesting I have. The ship. I have. Perhaps, perhaps more investigation is required. I am uh, sure I can't handle the matter by myself. But uh, if you have nothing else going on, perhaps I may be able to persuade you to join me. Well, it won't take much to persuade me, because if I'm off doing something else, then I don't have to pick cabbage. No, I don't have anything else to do. Was... Be cautious, though. I I have heard this land is cursed. Yeah, yeah, cursed my schmerst. There's all these kind of weird tales. Half Hill's not that far away. Perhaps some of the other patrons who are eyeing you so interestingly might have more information. I've noticed that table of men sitting over there staring at you. Well, they like my glorious beard. What can you say? <laughs> For a dwarf. And Reckman does have his beard, not necessarily braided, but he's got like a wooden ring around it, some leather straps. And some strings there to help it and bring the mustache down into it. He's got like the left side of his face, is sort of left side of his head is shaven. The right side of today is actually thrown over to the right. And you can tell there's a bunch of scars on the left side of his face. And he doesn't try to hide them at all. Um, as Rekmit kind of like moves his head around and itches his sort of absentmindedly touches the scars and the three of the people that were at the table that were kind of watching definitely now turn away and they sort of start to finish their drinks real quick and start to get up to leave. Yeah, they a large laugh and bellow. <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, they, they do that, uh, that thing where you kind of hurry out of a room, but you're trying not to look like you're hurrying out of a room. Uh, and they all, all three of them file out of the room. There's still two men at the table. <laughs> Does, uh, are they talking as they head out of the room? Not really. They're just kind of saying, oh, okay. ah, let's, 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 let's get going. It's must be time to go. We got to get back to work and stuff like that. Right. You know, oh, okay. Nothing... Okay. Okay. So, uh, Zeno's going to take his tea and head over to where the uh, remaining two people are and, uh, just seat himself at the table. 
What did you find so interesting, my friends? I saw your attention was quite stuck on myself and the other people at the bar. Well, not you, sir. Good sir. Not not you. We could see you're a fine, upstanding man here. Uh, in the in the rusty anchor, but uh, but you know the the, sh the short ones, you know. Ah, they're, yes. They're, they're 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 a little squirrely, but I th I think that you know that that dwarf, you know, he he has a beard like a dwarf, but you know they're farmers. And uh, is they should not be farmers. Well, I mean, it is good he is working in the land. Sure, nothing against farmers, you see, but, but, but they're dwarves. Dwarves don't farm; they mine. How come they're not mining? Ah. Or maybe they are well, mining. Perhaps we should. They're trying to hide something, you see. So it's a little bit suspicious. Perhaps we should call him over here so you can ask. Oh, I, 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 I don't think that's necessary. I, I don't think it's necessary. I know what we know his dwarf. Name. Oh. Dwarf, come here! No, shh, 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 keep your voice oh. down. Wait, you mean me? Rackman? I'll just get up, grab a drink, kind of saunter on over. like, hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> what did you say your name was again, friend Dwarf? Rackman. Uh, these men are very interested in your farming. Uh, or perhaps they think you might be mining underneath your farmlands. Have you found anything in your farming? I know these two guys. You've probably seen them around, but you don't you don't really have a good knowledge of them. They seem more like uh wharf guys, fishermen or yeah, other they're, farmers. They're they're people. dock workers. Dock workers? Okay. It's like, well, hey, what would you like to know? Technically we are mining. We're mining cabbage. Well, but and all kinds of other good herbs and stuff that you guys get to eat. It's not mining. I can't believe you don't. Oh, I get it. You're trying. You're trying to put one over on us, like like you don't know what mining is. <laughs> That's funny. Very funny. And he takes a drink of his whatever's in his cup. I'll take a little drink too. Tap his cup and say, "Good on you, sir." <laughs> they they think you have a stash of precious metals or ores. Hidden away somewhere, Rekmit. We hey, didn't. We didn't say all that. We didn't. We didn't say all that. We we didn't. We, but but do you? <laughs> as, as he looks at the clothing he's wearing, he tells hand me down. It's really well used. Like you think so? <laughs> you know how hard it is to feed a family of dwarfs. Well, that that we part. Do, no, no, I don't. I a little bit. Kind of like, other than the fact that I don't necessarily live under the ground, but the rest of my family has built into the ground, so we mined out a little place to live in the hill. I mean, you should probably know that. There's nothing strange about us dwarves. We just came here, and there's not a lot of mining opportunities unless we wanted to go, what, way up north, I think is where that is? Foothill Mountains or whatever? Is that where the mining is? Yeah, that Foothold Mountains. Yeah, that's where there's some mining. Yeah. We just didn't want to live all the way up in the Foothold Mountains. Modern dwarves. This is a new era. Oh, well. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. But okay. But all right. So I'll accept yeah. that. I'll accept that. But what about what about the long ear over there? But what about the what? The long ear. You know the long. Oh. Ear. He kind of points over at the table. Did Leonie's come over by us? Is Leonie's there? He's at the she's, she's at the table still, I think, right? Yep. Okay. Like, well, what about the long ear? I mean, they just have different ears. Well, yeah. We need to lift they supposed, the head up. Aren't they supposed to be in the forest? Well, some are in the forest. Some dwarves live under in the mountains, but not all. But, all people are. But but the why? But after. After the winter's dark, I mean, you can't just, you know, things are strange now. People do all kinds of things. Why don't you go ask them or ask her? 
her, right? Yeah. 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 Why don't you go ahead and ask her? No, it's sure okay. Talk about it. I'm talking about it. I have no problems with that. This is awesome. I love having a nice interaction with you. Spelling myths. Give me a little uh, jab in the ribs. It's all good. All right. How do you, how long, when you, the beard, how long does it take? What do you mean, how long does it take? Like, to grow your beard, how long did it take to make it like that? Well, it sprouted last this morning. I shaved it yesterday. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'd be walking on it. Well, you must be eating something different with that cabbage, too. That is true. <laughs> we drink our cabbage. Uh, right about then, the the other person at the table kind of elbows the guy you've been talking to and says, "All right, let's 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 get out of here. We gotta we gotta go to work. This is this is not gonna words gonna get around. Come on, let's go." Yeah, we'll see you on the docks later. Next time you guys need our help unloading some heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the sour beards. We'll be there to help you out. <laughs> As they're walking out, the one that was talking to you kind of turns and waves to everybody. <laughs> Wait. You good, sir? Yeah. And he's will be kind of looking and ignoring him. Bert's too focused on his food to notice. <laughs> has he he has he eaten the whole thing yet? Is actually what I'm asking. Oh, he's made it through way way through the cabbage stew and the bread. Uh, he's working on the potatoes now. <laughs> Excellent. How's that cabbage stew? Best cabbage stew you've ever had, isn't it? Oh, it's excellent. Cannot complain with the cabbage soup. <laughs> Just make sure you're not in the room with anyone else tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right about that time, uh, Becker comes out with the second tray uh, to give to Leonis. And, and he's uh, thank him. Yeah, it's it's a little bit smaller than than uh, than what than what they gave the halfling. And uh, he says, I, I, uh, pardon the size, I just, I brought the big one before because I thought you were all going to share it. So, and he mm. sets it in front of you, bows a little bit, turns to go. We're just newly met. We're not that friendly. <laughs> I just, I just, I just didn't know the halfling was going to eat so much. That was the sharing size? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at him. He's a hardy fellow. He needs a lot of food. Uh, I guess so. I guess. I guess so. Um, so it's pretty early afternoon. What would you? What would you like to do? Are you gonna? Are you going to try to book a room here? Lenny's well, as she uh, finishes, she'll be. She'll inquire. Uh, um, uh, Becca, if uh, about rooms. We have we have a whole bunch of rooms upstairs. We have double rooms. We have single rooms. We have a main room where there's about ten beds up there, and there's a hearth in that room so to keep you warm. But you're sleeping uh, with everybody else in the same room, so um, it's a copper piece per night for that common room, and then it's uh, three copper pieces a night for a double room, and it's a silver for a single room. Uh, means I'll, I'll, I'll take a single room. Okay. Do you know how many nights you're going to need it? I'm not sure. Definitely tonight. We'll have to see what uh, ships, what the ship's schedules are like. Excellent. I mean, no, if you want to know uh, the, the ship schedule, you can always go across the bridge here over to the port office. It's almost directly across. Mm-hmm. Well, well, then we'll settle for tonight. We'll, we'll I'll book a room for tonight, and we'll, we'll work on the next night. That was kind of an out of character comment. Would it be decent of me to invite the others to stay at my homestead? They wished. Or do you want us all to kind of stay here? You, you can, you can do whatever you think would be good. <laughs> I'll mention the other one. Hey. Not great accommodations, I'm sure this would be better, so take that into account. 
but you could come and stay in my barn with me. I, I don't live in the homestead with my family. I live in the barn. I have my own space. It's not necessarily comfortable, but it's warm. Family's friendly-ish. I mean, they're dwarves. They're not like me. They're more like what you think of as dwarves. But they, leave us, they leave me alone for the most part because, well, you know, I do what I do. So you're the halfling, the human, you're all welcome to come. With, of course, Jake. You know, if we meet back at the barn, we can talk about this old uh, uh, spot at Goat Hill. Uh, those uh, kids from uh, the Grogton farm, they uh, they found some uh, old caves over there. Maybe we can go check that out tomorrow. In in Goat Hill. We're in Goat Hill. My family kind of lives sort of on Goat Hill. Really? So I like the north side? <clears throat> um, I think it's more on the, the other side, but yeah. On the other side of north would be south. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, break north. it here. I'll, I'll talk yeah. to Sam real quick. I had looked at... I can actually write on the map, can I? Yep. Uh, yeah, so do you want me to throw the whole... I can... Uh... Oh, no, I was going to... My draw. <laughs> That'd be a way to pick a color, right? Nope. Yeah, so if you click the pin, you click the dot next to it. Okay. See yeah. that? Yeah, I see that. I was thinking of that as being their homestead. Would you like it to be somewhere else? It's not really a problem for me. I just saw the farm fields. I figured somewhere right around there. They wouldn't be writing down and kind of a mile yeah, out. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, okay, back in character. Well, it's on the south side. Got yeah, a couple of, you know, I mean, I suppose there could be that I haven't found yet, but I would think that it'd probably be to the north or to the northwest. It could even be to the northeast up by the uh, Hollow Forest. Oh, you know, rumors are pretty unreliable on where the exact location is. But uh, if we go up, um, let's see, just north of Shepherd's Hill Road. That's where uh, they they found this uh, cave entrance. Hmm. Well, I guess they would be on the other side of that, the, the kind of trees and forest there that we don't go too much. Well, well, you know, that's a me, possibility. You, that guy over there, that elf, and the guy who keeps on eating, <laughs> you'd probably go check that out sometime. <laughs> the guy who keeps on eating. <laughs> my official nickname now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll forever be known as the guy who keeps on eating. I don't know what he does, but he's he looks like he can help us. So Linnies has, has been busy eating and kind of listening. It is interesting you talk... I, I heard a rumor on the ship from somebody else that they said that the wizard had been uh, driven out of town some time ago. He headed northwest. Have you heard of this one? What did you say? It was a wizard? A wizard, yeah. Oh. Don't know. It was like very strange. They were very vague about it. They were just going on about some. Talking about this town, this, when he was driven out. Apparently, he was digging up bodies in the graveyard. But he'd headed up to the northwest. Well, that might be she driven out of town. You can see the locals already have a little bit of a negative so the viewpoint about the halflings in the air. So, digging graves, digging up bodies. Probably freak people out a little bit here. That's what for a little town, there's an awful lot seems to be going on here. Well, there's also uh, some barrow mines up near, uh, I'm sorry, barrow mounds up near uh, Oxwood. Maybe that's where the that wizard went. But we don't need anyone picking up stuff around here. 
at the gaps with his points on the road up towards the glades, and there's some hills in there. I mean, it's basically so. Basically south of the three top hills and the four top hills is that road through the whole island. So anyway, I take it the light green is like lighter forest and like the dark green is a much more heavy forest. Yeah, so the um the area with the the sort of tree with the the rounded with one tree with a rounded top that's kind of light and then there's there's the same color, but sort of has three trees on it. That's a more dense forest, but that's a temperate forest. Okay. Um, the darker color is a mixture of temperate and pine, and the okay. and there's then there's a third, even darker one that's all that's all like conifers and pine, sort of. Oh, I see. Two trees. I see that. I didn't see the foothold mountains earlier, but now I see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, if there's something missing. Brown Goat Hill, I would definitely like to check that out because that could affect my sh my family. And there's something going on up at Half Hill, I would definitely like to go check that out pretty quickly as well. Now, myself personally, I'd like to go up to the Foothold Mountains, but we don't have to do that for a while. We got to get, get to know each other a little bit. <laughs> That's a long trip. Man. The caves. I, there, it's possible there might be refugees hiding in those caves. And I thank you for your hospitality, friend dwarf, but I am going to stay the night at the inn. I don't want to impose. And oh. Zeno also book a room at the inn. Okay. Go around. All right, um, so is any is anyone going to uh, the homestead with Reckmit? Bert's considering it, but uh, then he thought about how much cabbage stew he's had, and I think he's going to book a room as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine I stayed with Rekmet uh, quite a bit, so I'll head over with him. Okay. All right, well, where do we all want to meet tomorrow? What do we want to do? Do we want to try and go check out that the half hill, or do we want to check out the stuff that goes close to us, or close to my, my home place? I I want to check out the caves. I I am searching for someone. What are the caves? I'll vote yeah. for caves. Caves. Friends, it's yeah, I have nothing better to do. I'll go to the caves. Oh, well, how about this? I know you can check on this the uh, ship schedule. I'll do that this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'll give them kind of direction how to get to our homestead, and we can head up there in the morning along with what was it the uh, the halfling was going to come it was in the morning as well. Yep. What was okay? So was the monk going with us, or was the monk staying here? Uh, the monk's uh, sleeping at the end, but okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you tomorrow. Just in the morning, we can head out and start searching around Shepherd Hill or Goat Hill. Sorry, north of the. Shepherd's Hill Road track. Okay. Um, so what would you like to do for the rest of the afternoon? Uh, are you going to actually go to the port office? Yeah, Lenny's will, 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 as we disperse, she will head out and go to the port office. She'll just check to see what the schedule is really like. Okay. She's intrigued. Um, no, she was. She has no particular rush now to go away. Okay. Um. Do you know what the name of the ship that you were on was? Uh, it was the uh, the Lost Bell. Okay. That's a terrible name for a ship. <laughs> I know. I now know. <laughs> sure. Should be called a lost mast. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so um, you're going to head over to the port office? Yes. Okay. Uh, the port officer there, his name is Alder Heliot. He is the main port officer for uh, the entire town. And so he has a schedule of um, of what ships are currently docked and what ships are set to come in. And the port office is, whoops, on the wrong screen here. The port office is literally directly across, whoops, from, directly across from the, from uh, the tavern that you were in. But you have to come up and go across this bridge then. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wander and I'll go and see the portmaster and uh, inquire of what the skip, ship schedule is. Okay. Uh, and peruse. Well, so Leonie is thinking, it's like, well, she really wasn't heading anywhere for anything in particular. She was just looking for uh, actually an old family friend but that nobody had heard of from a while, but it was more of a whim rather than a, a quest. Mm -hmm. So she, she is thinking about staying around for a few days, but would be interested in knowing what the general schedule is. Okay. Um, she'll take a look and she'll well, make a few notes. Okay. So uh, Alder tells you that um, right now, uh, of course, the Lost Bell is in port, but it's being worked on. Of course, it's going to be uh, put up in dry dock so they can repair the mast. So, of course, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um the Lady Ruby is leaving this afternoon and headed to the mainland. The Prince John is leaving tomorrow at some point, probably in the morning, possibly in the afternoon. It depends on uh, how they how quickly they can get everything that they need done and loaded up. And they're actually just going up to the northern portion of the island, okay, up where the up where the uh, larger town is. Um, and uh, then there are three ships that are are merchant ships. One of them is called Heaven's Mast. One is Sharp Goods, and one is the Wave Sleeper. And all three of those are leaving not tomorrow, but the next day. Hmm. And they'll be carrying goods of some sort, probably to the mainland, but then they take a circuitous route to go to multiple different delivery uh, spots. Yeah. Yes, don't, don't fancy the uh, ships. Oh, all right, I'll maybe call back in a few days. Sure. Uh, there's there's a couple of ships set to come in tomorrow, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we don't we don't log them in until, until they actually get here. They're mm -hmm. regulars, so they're merchant ships as well, but uh, merchant ships will often take on passengers if you want to travel in one of them, so... They do, but usually they're slow and they go weird places. That's true. Yes. <laughs> well, well, well. Thank you for your time. I will. I will see you shortly. Of course, of course. You know, not not very many passenger ships come this way. I mean, this isn't really a um, a uh, uh, a touristy place. It's um, you know, people that come here they come here to work or to to deliver goods or to to pick up goods to deliver. So. You might be hard pressed to find a, uh, a, uh, a a comfortable passenger liner, you know. I know. I'm assuming the uh, but the broken mast. I mean, the uh, lost bell must uh, <laughs> must uh, leave at some point. It will as soon as it gets fixed, but that's probably going to be a while. So they have exactly. to make sure they can pay for the repairs too, you know, before they before they let them leave. And they do owe me a passage, so. Yeah. Sure course you know you can uh you can petition the the baron well you can petition at the town hall for the baron to grant you uh, a writ of approval and then they can uh they can pay you back for that passage rather than you waiting around for them interesting i'll bear that in mind thank you yes 
of course. Hmm. This, uh, unfortunately, is not an uncommon occurrence. You know, uh, uh, we have we have plenty of ships come limping in here. The uh, the Banning Sea sometimes gets some ill winds and uh, does does a number on the ships, and so yeah, it's pretty pretty common for ships to come in that need repair, and so we have a whole process in place for that, just just in case. Oh, organized. I do like that. Well, the Baron does like to uh, make sure he can uh, get his tax cut, you know. <laughs> he charges, Money, of course. charges tariffs for uh, any writ that he has to approve, you know, that, that, that ship that... Uh, that is at fault has to it's some pay some fees and hmm. it must be quite lucrative then well i wouldn't say lucrative it doesn't happen that often but uh well thank you i will uh i'll maybe just wait for the uh lost bell seems quite a pleasant place to be All right. Sounds good. I'll I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And Leonie's all wander back to. Uh, she'll take a wander through town as she heads back to the to the inn. Okay. Just to inspect, see what's there. She's just meandering, soaking up. So the um, the port office is in uh, that the neighborhood there has a lot of the stores in town. So there's. Uh, there's, uh, let me make sure I tell you the right thing here. Um, there's a, uh, right, right to the left of the port office is a little shop called Willem's Finery, where they sell, um, fine clothing and equipment. Uh, to the left of that is a brewer, Zelgel's Family Brewery. Um, just north of that is Leuven's General Supplies. And just north of Leuven's is Gellin's Fletching and Bows. And to the right of that is the Tannery. And just south of the Tannery there, there's two buildings. One of them is the Butcher, and one of them is uh, Templeton's, the other uh, tavern. Uh. Uh, she'll, she'll spend some time, I'm assuming, as, uh, at the Fletchers to you know, just window shopping, basically. Okay, okay. But, yeah. She's she's meandering, and then she'll work her way. She, she inspects, and then works her way back to the inn. <coughs> so you want to you want to go into the Fletcher shop? No, she's just kind of looking. Okay. I'm assuming there's some window with some wares. Yeah, so there's split. um there's smaller windows. Uh they're not like huge, you know, fashion designer display windows, but uh but there are windows so that you can see in the store to see if it's open and whatnot. And you see, you know, six or seven tables laid out and there's a couple of bows hanging on the wall and there's a person sitting on a uh <coughs> on a uh on a, on a on a stool, you know, sort of you know, doing some crafts work. It looks uh, pretty utilitarian, you know. There's not a ton of um, decoration that is uh, that is. Uh, oops, I lost my lost my video. Where'd it go? Uh, yeah, we go. we're still talking. <laughs> there, yeah. there's not a ton of um, uh, of fancy sort of stuff, you know. In fact. Pretty much just walking around this quarter of the town, you can tell that um, the town is, on one hand, um, you can tell that it's it's well organized and it's relatively clean, but on the other hand, there's nothing fancy about it. You know, even Willem's Finery is a very much um, a, a sort of high low end <laughs> if, if that makes sense yeah. um mm -hmm. it's it's sort of silks but nothing exotic or super fancy but silk itself in this area is 
is fancy on its own. Um, but you know, nothing like what you might see in a, in a nation's capital or in, you know, in, in a large kingdom or anything like that. Um, this is part of a kingdom. Uh, the current king is King Drummond the third. And the baron of this, of this location, this southern, southern tip of the island, that the, the lands that the baron rules, the baron actually was knighted as well by the king. So um, they have a pretty close relationship. Uh, and so the king kind of lets the baron do whatever he wants with this region. Um, but you can tell that it's pretty organized, but just not real fancy. So. Right. Okay. So yeah, so I'm probably not going to be buying anything, any clothes from here because they won't, match, you know, won't live up to my standards. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Just for a little background, where's the king located at? Uh, on far, the island? Uh, far to the north about, um, so you're on the southern tip of the island basically. There's a little slight bit of land south of you, but... Um, you're basically on the southern part. The The king is in the town that's almost smack dab, just slightly north of the middle of the island. So several several dozens of miles away. Because um, the island's about 100, I think I said 100 feet long on the intro. Did I, is that what I said? I want to make sure yes. I say the wrong thing. Um, yeah, the, the, the island is roughly 100 miles long and 50 to 70 miles wide. It's not an exact triangle or rectangle, of course. Um, and so you're on the southern portion and the, the kingdom is probably, you know, or the, the town, the, the capital city is probably, you know, 50, 60 miles north of you. So far, right. but not that far, right? I mean, you could get there in a few days. Um, but the kingdom is located on this island. Is it? Say that again. The kingdom is actually located on this island. The seat of the king. Yeah, the whole, the whole island basically is the kingdom. Um, cool. And then there's a little bit of land on the mainland to the south that is kind of claimed by King Drummond. And there's a couple of towns down there, but it's not extremely um, well populated down there. So... Uh, you know, the Marl is just south of that. The, the sort of hills that are to the north of the Marl is, is just south of where the area I'm talking about. And so there have been lots of orc raids and whatnot in that area. So uh, the land's not really contested except by orcs. So um, he, the king kind of claims it, but then when there's an orc raid, he doesn't often have enough time to get people there to defend it. So yeah, it's a, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> okay. It's mine, but I don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah. Until he can get probably a big enough contingent or a strong enough, you know, contingent there, then it's not, you know, it's not going to be something that he spends a ton of time on. The island is prosperous right now, so perhaps it'll grow. You know. It's one of those outlying regions that really doesn't provide enough tax revenue to be all that important. Yeah, so, and that's kind of suspected. Um, that's that's kind of what the suspicion is, that, uh, wow, what happened to the screen? There it goes. Um, that stream just, like, it's some weird. Yeah, it came back. Um, mm -hmm. th it's kind of suspected that, um, you know, the king and the baron are kind of trying to build up everything and, and get a much higher population. And, you know, they've been doing things like... Uh, trying to you know encourage families to farm more land and have more children and things like that to to grow the population so. sorry i remember to shut off the video but i forgot to shut off audio <laughs> <laughs> so anything else you want to do in the evening before uh before you meet up in the morning at the Reckmit homestead? What I know I was going to do, and I'm not sure. Um, Jake, were you going to go check out the uh, Abbey, or were you just going to kind of turn along and do your own thing? Because I'm going to take my little pull cart and go around to the other inns and taverns and pick up any leftover uh, vegetables and junk that they have to bring back to, to the farm, like I typically get to do once a week. Part of why I want to go around You're uh, you're muted. 
No, Matt. <laughs> Not you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll stay here at the barn and uh, just hang out for a bit. Okay. You know. But I'll catch you later, sir. D- you know daily ritual. Uh, f- just for your information, there are three, uh, three sort of main churches in town. There is the Abbey, which is on the hill on the western part of town, which is an okay. abbey of Saint, uh, an, uh, not Saint, an abbey of Eolor, who is the god of the sea. Um, and then there is uh, a temple to Orzar, okay, in the middle of town, actually uh, right across from the blacksmith. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there is a house of Saint Luther uh, on the other on the other hill, sort of south of the barons. Um, south, uh, actually not south, more uh, east of the barons' castle there. And, and I believe Saint Luther and uh, Durandale are kind of. United, yeah, in a way. Yep, exactly, exactly. So you would probably I'll call it a trinity. Yeah. So a, a, as a cleric uh, of Durandale, you would probably sort of know that you could go to the house of Saint Luther if you needed something, and they would recognize your your position uh, as a cleric. Of course, I'm part of the Trinity. I just figured this out. <laughs> Durndale and Jake. Um. So, so what's next? What are we all doing? I think um, I know. I'm going to go by the brewer, drop off some supplies, and if I happen to see Leonie, I'll so, you know wave to her and say, "Look forward to meeting you tomorrow." And on my way back to the farmstead or homestead, I'm going to stop in at the. Uh, House of St. Luther, drop off a little minor uh, gift or whatever, copper piece or something like that. Yeah, okay. If I have to see Jake, I'll say, good to see you, sir, and head on back to where I'm going to go. Okay. My little study, that kind of stuff that I engage in. Okay. <clears throat> and Ings will, will kind of like just, she'll be wandering around, stretching her legs, and then she'll head back to the inn and just kind of relax. Okay. Basically, I was going to retire. I was going to retire early so he can meditate. Here for tomorrow. Okay. Bert's going to go happily uh, go into a food coma for the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Should be a whole thing. Uh. So the um the the rusty anchor gets pretty rowdy. Um. At night. And so when dusk falls, there's sort of a rush of people into the place and it's rowdy and loud and boisterous and somebody pulls out a drum and somebody pulls out a flute and they're playing music uh, and um, laughing and drinking and and doing all of that stuff. Um, And... um, And, uh, and they're out on the deck, out on the docks there, um, and, um, just being generally loud. So, uh, the halfling's probably not having a problem sleeping. Um, the elf might be a little annoyed at the boisterousness of, of the crowd, but perhaps not. Um, right, actually, if it sounds like it's a good time, she may actually just have a wander down and observe, maybe have another goblet or two of that local wine which definitely was better as he was going down than after but wasn't bad <laughs> okay but she's um, going to sit and observe you know. okay she likes people watching okay um well, as you're people watching, uh, you notice that um, you notice that um, there are several um, occasions when a fight almost breaks out, and 
um, a uh, the same person seems to always kind of shut it down. And you learn just from listening and and uh, and sort of paying attention that the person who is shutting it down is Pickle Bailey. He's a uh, he's a halfling who is. Um, he looks uh, more skinny than any halfling you've ever seen. He looks kind of uh, almost malnourished, and he looks a little bit dirty, and his clothes are, you know, kind of ripped and stained. Um, but he's got big muscles, and whenever anybody starts acting up, he he basically goes over and and he says, uh, you know, either either take it outside. And, and I'll push into the river or you stop. And occasionally somebody tries to keep going and he tries another tack and says, well, let me arm wrestle you. And if we arm wrestle and I win, you have to stop fighting. Right. Um, and he's won three arm wrestling matches now tonight. Uh, and, and after that, uh, p p people quit sort of acting out. Um, and he's now sitting quietly sort of just drinking his ale. Um, and as the night wears on, it gets a little bit quieter and a little bit quieter. And late into the night, um, eventually there's only four or five other people there. And Pickle Bailey happens to be one of them that is still there. Um, the owner of the Rusty Anchor, whose name is Ramsey, is there. Um, Becker went home a while ago. Um, and there's a couple of local farmers and a fisherman there as well. Okay, but I would have, I would have probably gone to bed, you know, yeah. as you started to calm down. Okay. So other than that, I was going to say nothing. Nothing much really happens, but um, you get the idea that that's kind of a typical night there at the Rusty Anchor. So yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Um, anything else anybody wants to do for the evening? Okay, so uh, you wake up in the morning nice and refreshed, maybe. <laughs> guess it depends on how much you drank of that wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're a boring bunch so far. <laughs> uh, Bert is definitely uh, more well-rested than he has been the last few days because uh, being on the ship was not a happy... Yeah, I didn't enjoy that too much. So, um, so it's morning. What are you doing? I'm assuming that, uh, that you're all going to just head to the barn of the Rekmit, uh, Rekmit's homestead. As Zeno wakes up before dawn, in a bed early to rise and immediately heads on over to, uh, Rekmit's. Keep an eye along the way for any, uh, other their early morning risers or late night that may be still wander. Um, so h how early are you out? Uh, what time is sunrise? Probably about, let's see. I gotta remember what time of year I said it was. Um, you said it was said it frosty. Was yeah. yeah, so um you're pro it's probably the sun is probably gonna be out around five thirty, six AM. Yeah, he'll wake up at five o'clock on out. <clears throat> so at five o'clock in the morning, um the fishermen are all coming out of their houses and getting in their boats and heading out. Um, and the fishermen are, wow, the stream got really weird again. Uh, the fishermen are in this part of town. 
So down here in this sort of southern area down here, these are all the sort of where all the fishermen live down here. These, these little houses in this area here. And as you come out and you're just sort of, you know, looking around, paying attention, you see probably 15, 20 fishermen there um, coming out and getting in their boats and, and getting ready to head out because um, this is sort of prime time for them. But really, there's not a lot of other activity. That's that's pretty much it. Um, you do hear some chanting up on the hill where the abbey is, uh, the abbey in the in the sort of um, the eastern or western uh, portion of the town. Um, they often come out in the morning, and and as the sun rises, they say prayers and chants and whatnot as it comes over the ocean, because um, Elor is the god of the oceans. So uh, they're often up at sunrise. Um, but other than that, there's not a ton of activity. Um, it's a pretty sleepy town uh, in that respect. Uh, probably if you were to go out to the farms, you would see a ton of activity because they get up with the sun as well and, or before the sun and and do a lot of things there. I'm going to head over, gonna head over to Rick next time. Okay. Yeah. Um, Leonese will work her, work her way over there. Um Maybe join the other. She won't be too early in the morning. She'll, she'll enjoy her uh, morning time, <laughs> looking out over the ocean, looking at the, you know, just the picturesque views. Okay. Bert also will not be too early. He's more of an early to bed, late to rise kind of person. <laughs> um, so yeah, a little bit later on in the morning, he'll uh, he'll work his way over. Uh, what about Jake? Is Jake an early to rise? Person. Oh, Jake is definitely an early to rise up in the morning with Durandale, singing his praises, being careful not to wake, wake up Rec Mech too much, you know, but uh, definitely got the prayers going on, things like that. Okay. So eventually you all gather at Rec Mech's homestead, well, his family's homestead. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> And what is it that you want to do? <clears throat> so we'll come in. Yeah, we can very cheerfully, happily, ask them how their night was. Order my dinner. <laughs> so, um, I think we need to figure out where the uh, the old Grogton farm is um, up on Shepherd's Hill Road, so that way we can find this. Uh, uh, it's basically a ram's head at the base of Goat Hill. Ram's Get those kids to lead us out there. Maybe we can figure out what's happening. Which direction is that? That would be east of here. Yeah, like, hmm. but north, northeast, or? Almost directly uh, east, because we are, um, if I can, it's not really on the map that's up right now in Owlbear. Oh, here, let me, sorry, let me switch the map. Is there two Owlbear links, I wonder? Because it looks like me, Chris, and Matt are in one. Um, I wonder if we're in the wrong one here, though. Um, let me throw the... There should not be two. There's only one. Let me throw it in the Discord real quick. Yeah, we're... we're... Hmm. Do I have any... I see Robert. Any recognition of that name of the farm? Uh, you know the Grogton family. Okay. So I kind of know where they lived, right? Sure. And what was the rumor? Um, the whole rumor is there's a hidden dungeon below a rock-shaped, like a ram's head at the base of Goat Hill, just north of the Shepherd's Hill Road. Kids, kids on the old Grogton farm stumbled into it one night. 
They call it Ram's Rock and insist there's something behind it. And please note that KIDS is spelled K-I-D-S as opposed to K-I-D-D-S, which would be an evil DM trick to play on their party. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why you would suspect I would play a trick like that. (laughs) This would be my best guess of where it is. Because my farm is technically somewhere in this region. And you're talking the base, so it's got to be north of this road here. So it has to be somewhere. And I would guess the farm was not in the woods, though. I guess it could be. There are orchard farms, but the Grogton farm is uh, is not an orchard farm. Okay. So is it more over, like... It's it's just north of uh, Shepherd's Hill Road there. Yeah, it's a long road. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I was looking at the stream, and the stream does not show that. I might have to take that down, because I think that's oh, part of what's messing with the stream. Um, I blame Chuck. Yeah, let's blame Chuck. Every it's Everything's Chuck. Chuck's. Yeah, especially while he's listening. Always Chuck. I think he's not listening yet, um, or anymore. Let me let me take a pause and and fix that because I think that's what's causing the issues here, at least part of them. So, in the ram said on Goat Hill is that where the caves are? Supposedly, it's something about caves. Kids can wander quite a bit though from their farms, so. I have to check kind of this whole area out, I guess. So let me throw a... It could be in the woods. Well, this could be those those kids. This could be their moment, the adventurers like us. Here, hold my spear. <laughs> See? I love to carry a spear, but it's too uh, unburdensome to me. Okay, waiting. So... I'll ask Leonice and uh, the monk, like, so what's the mainland like? I've never been off this island. I've never traveled more than 50 miles from my homestead. What, what's it like out there? Oh, it's big and large in that case. <laughs> Are there other dwarves? Dwarves. There are elves. Even... Even some of our small friends. Lots of I humans. Keep, I keep telling him this is the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's from a small little hamlet. And Lindelofen isn't all that big. So the, the Grogton farm uh, is um, basically I on the Owlbear map, I, I put a blue dot where it is it's right it's right to the to the right hand side of the l in the word hill i see it that's where old grogton's farm is okay i change the color or do you not get to change the color um does it is there when you uh choose the little paintbrush thing does a menu appear on the top of your screen no um, that's weird. What color would you like? Because I can change the color. Doesn't matter. It can be that. Okay, yeah. so let's make it dark. My suggestion is because seeing as we're starting here, ish, mm-hmm. that we would want to check. They say it's north of the Grognard Farm and in the foothills. It could be in these woods, probably somewhere along this area, because the kids are probably not going to go more than a mile or a half mile away from their farm. That's just my guess. I tended to be a little more rambunctious, so hence why I got in a lot more trouble. So that is going to be a couple, or at least a mile from where we're at now. We'll have to go through these woods. I have to start searching. Let's say the rest of you. Sounds like a plan to me. 
Sounds like yeah. a good plan. Right. Okay, so do it. how would you like to do the search? Well, it says the rock is right at the base of the hill, uh, just north of the road. So we start at the road, then uh, just search around the base of the hill. My only suggestion would be, let's say we start here at the farm. Let's go to the base of the hill here and follow it along the, the line of the hill. Yeah. We could spread out a little bit and kind of comb the area. That would, that would yeah. seem a reasonable idea. Uh, do, we, do we want to uh, just ask the kids to take us there? Well, what we could do, probably a better idea, is head down to the base of the hill along, and when we get to whatever point, run to the farm or connect into the farm and see if we can talk to the kids. And see if we don't find it along this area here, maybe they can pinpoint it for us somewhere up in here, which we haven't found. We haven't found it yet. Okay. Yeah, that way we're kind of doing both. We're looking for ourselves, and if we can't find it, we can get the kids to lead us to it. Right. At least do the searches on the way to the town, because to, to get down to the road and go over, we might as well just kind of go through the woods and have a little fun time. We can get to know each other <laughs> while I stand behind the cleric. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, yeah, we could just go, because we'd follow the hill as we went, right? I mean... that was If it's on the base of the hill, it might be in those woods. We just follow that along, and we get to the point where I know where the farm is. We'll cut across the field into the farm and talk to the family. Jake, how big are you, by the way? I'm about six foot tall. Oh, perfect. I can hide right behind you. Go ahead. You hide behind me? I'm not hiding behind you. I'm right there to give you a, a rune. A little, a little blessing. All right. I'm good with that. You're in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. You like to hit things, I know. I do. I do. I like it's a lot easier. Good combination. Uh, so, give me two seconds here. Your brains, my brawn. <laughs> hey, brains, let's not get carried away now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friendly. And I've always been known for my, my wisdom or my brains. Right though, compared to the rest of my kin, just don't want to get your expectations all too high for the guys who don't know me. <laughs> and if I recall, we do not want to get hurt in this game because uh, going unconscious is very bad. Correct, Samuel? Um. Going unconscious is bad, but you're not dead until you hit uh, negative, negative 10. 10. So right. uh, if you get between negative 7 and negative 9, you start losing hit points every round. So if, okay. you, if you're not able to be stabilized at that point, you probably are going to die. Um, so basically getting to negative 6 is real bad. Getting to negative 2, as long as you can get some healing, you're probably going to be okay. Um, right. Now, if you're at negative two and everybody else is still fighting and also going down, then yeah, of course you're not. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you're not. You're not perma dead at zero. Okay. Um, so your your plan is to start uh, sort of by the farm, go along the base of the hill, and go through this sort of uh, small set of trees here. Of course, I say small, but you know each of these hexes is a half mile. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you're gonna go through a mile's worth of forest, checking the base of the, of the of the hill here. Is that what I'm hearing? You're starting from that side. Yeah, sounds like the, yep. the, the plan. Okay. Um, Correct. So, um... basically, when we get to the part on the base of the hill through the woods, where I would estimate and guesstimate with my memory of this area. That would go to the Grognard farm, that we'd cut over there to go right to them, or you know, okay. work along the hill, cut down. 
at the point where it's effective to cut that angle off. So basically we'll go through a half mile of the woods through here, catch this base of the hill, um, probably a mile-ish, three quarters of a mile in the woods, and then cut down to the Grognard farm is the intent if we don't find the caves in, in, these, in the uh, forested area along the base of the hill. Okay. Anyone um, have a disagreement with that? We're good. Sounds pretty logical to me. Yeah. It sounds like a plan. Okay. Um, so... Who is comfortable outdoors? Oh, yeah. Yeah, comfortable enough, I suppose. Yeah, Zeno's pretty comfortable outdoors. He, he's uh, he's went on retreats and uh, he's been outdoors quite a bit. Okay. Evening. Does anyone have, <clears throat> excuse me, does anybody have any special um, knowledge of the forest or any special abilities that allow them to uh, detect things or or notice things that's over and above the normal? Just just checking, because I, I have not memorized your character sheets at this point. So, so Lenny's has got you know, a good chance of moving silently in the wild. Uh, enhanced senses, obviously, as an elf. Uh, spotting hidden doors as an ed is something. Okay. Certainly, if we're looking, depends on how you want to play if we're looking or not. Sure. The only thing that Reckman might have to his advantage is his eidetic memory. Mm -hmm. So, having been in this kind of area, if he would remember anything about it, but not necessarily comfortable outdoors with respect to any kind of rangery or outdoor skills. Okay. Uh, so. I would say then that Rekmit, since his, his family homestead, his farmstead, is basically near these hills, you know that there is a, uh, an animal that lives uh, in the <coughs> woods in these areas. Uh, you've probably never seen one yourself, but you've heard from some of the loggers and foresters that they roam the hills in this area. They are they are forest hill creatures. And they are called Kuthis. They are um sort of wolf shaped, wolf like. They're jet black. Their their hair is very thin. They have a large crest of hair on the ridge of their back. Uh and they um they stalk through the forest in groups. Uh, and they're small sized creatures though. So even though I say wolf like, that's just sort of in shape and demeanor, not in size. They're small size. Um, but they hunt in packs. Do they tend to be nocturnal, diurnal, or daytime? They tend to be dawn and dusk hunters. Okay. But um, that's not, you know, that, that's just a tendency, not a given. Um, but I will, I'm going to throw a picture up here. I will, I'll put it in discord first so that you can see it. And then I'm going to put it on the stream. What, I, what I'll say is to my companions, as we get kind of into the woods, to say, the only thing I do know of, and I, I haven't run these myself, is I've heard that there's some small wolf-like creatures that inhabit these woods so you might want to just at least be on the lookout and have everyone kind of be prepared for just in case but like i've lived here a long time and i've never run into them myself so like they're the size of a corgi right yeah so, sort of yeah <laughs> <What's> a corgi <laughs> um it's uh like a pug but so looks more like a <laughs> are you making fun of my urban heritage? <laughs> <laughs> you are awesome. Um, so, uh, so there's a picture there for the stream, uh, so uh -huh. people can see it. Um, and I threw it in the Discord too, in case you're not, you don't happen to be watching the stream. Um, that is a Kuthis, and remember they're small. So yeah, the size of a sort of in real life corgi a little bit. They're sort of more elongated than that and a little bit taller, but they're still small creatures. 
They look like they have smooth hides, but they do have fine hair all over it, except uh, this area right in the ridge of their back. And of course, you can see their sort of elongated snout with a bunch of teeth in it. Mm -hmm. Pleasant looking creature. Yeah, pleasant looking. So, it be a little scarier. <laughs> so as, um, as you're going through this forest, this is what Rekmit is telling you about. And so... It could be annoying to run into some of those. <laughs> I'm only about three foot tall, so a corgi sounds pretty vicious. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> you could probably ride one of these. <laughs> oh no, there's a plan. Um, and so you get about a half a mile into this forested area. You have not seen any rocks that have an odd shape, because remember the the rumors sort of hinged on the fact that this rock had a weird shape, right? It had, uh, it, it had the shape of a ram's head. It wasn't just a typical rock that they suddenly stumbled into a cave, you know, near this normal rock. You have not seen anything that looks like that. But as you're traveling through, you start hearing things. And uh, you get the distinct feeling that something is following you. Mm -hmm. What could possibly go wrong with that? <laughs> so if you um, want to roll me a wisdom siege check, I can tell you how many creatures you think you hear around. You're all kind of equally at home or not at home in the forest, so... So for the wisdom check, it's just a D20 with our bonus? Yeah, so this is just sort of a standard check. So you're going to roll the D20 plus your wisdom modifier plus your level. So I don't forget to add your level. Okay, how does this dice work for adding? 11. And where, where are we rolling this? Just on our desk uh i mean you can yeah we can go with the honor system I, i'm not so worried about that if you have owlbear open owlbear has a dice roller too it does. Oh. so i got a 15 for my first roll double clicked sorry 15 plus uh two so 17 okay and it's got a 19 plus one so a 20 uh 21 okay so the target number is <laughs> 18 if wisdom is not prime and 12 if it is prime. It's a very yep, basic I didn't make it. Um, if you succeeded on your check, you feel like there are four creatures stalking you as a group. They are moving very silently, but you still were able to detect them because there are so many. But because there are four of them, at least... Uh, it sounds like they're sort of in a semicircle behind you. I'm sure they're just hedgehogs. <laughs> With my five. Yeah, you guys are all paranoid. There's nothing following us. <laughs> There's something definitely following us. hedgehogs. Because those turn their little tails, their spiky tails on you, and then you just smell forever. But... I still move behind uh, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. If they're behind us, are you behind him or are you in front of him now? Technically, I guess I'm in front of him and I turn him around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things that we have it down. We, we have our own uh, advantage in combat where um, if I turn around, he's naturally tracking behind me. Whoop. So if I complete circle he's going in a complete circle around me <laughs> <laughs> we, we've little... mastered this over the past six months of friendship so 
He calls it friendship. I call it protection. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the clothes go like, what? What? Wait. <laughs> And I so, thought I had the wisdom. Clearly. So, uh, um, sometimes. No, so, back. looking back behind us, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to see if I can see one of these small creatures. Okay. Or creatures. Hopefully, it's just those meddlesome kids. <laughs> yeah, it's They're, just the Crofton kids. Those <laughs> meddlesome <laughs> kids are annoying us. <laughs> Irregardless, I pull out my sling and a sling stone. Go ahead and, and give me a, a um, how about an intelligence siege check? Who is that? Just a uh, big? Yeah, because he's he's specifically looking around for them. Okay. But I'm a cleric. We don't do those rolls. <laughs> <laughs> We really don't do those rolls, Samuel. Well, we do them now. If I was prime, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Um, so hey. you look to where you think you hear them, and when you're looking, um, you when you look directly at the spot where you thought you saw it you don't see mm -hmm. anything but in your peripheral vision out of the corners of your eyes you see yeah. something from each side as if it's moving but when you turn to look and focus on that thing yeah you don't see it anymore no nah. but what you saw also you saw specifically some something that had fur you saw fur move okay uh something's coming up on us and i can't see it I totally can't see it. Uh, Samuel, I'm sorry. What time of day is it roughly again? Still um, morning? It's it's morning, but you're in a pretty thick forest, so it's relatively right. dim. It's not it's not bright light by any means, but it's not dark. I mean, it's you know, right. But it but it's still about 10, 11 a.m. Maybe it depends. Actually, depends on how long it took the halfling to get out of bed and get over to the, <laughs> the farmstead. Right. Yeah, I think eleven is probably the safer. <laughs> <laughs> you did pretty okay. good for a halfling yeah, yeah. <laughs> after a big meal uh -huh. <laughs> so I will have you have to eat I will have my <laughs> bastard sword at the ready and uh, my shield as well uh, just waiting you know starting to freak out a little bit over uh, whether it's going to come on the left or the right mm -hmm. so uh, Lenny's will be like what do you see? Uh, what I, I saw a furry creature or something back there. I can't tell what it is. Can you see where they are? No. It, it, it disappeared out of my sight. Um, you see Lenny starting to uh, mutter and move her hands as she looks around. We want to continue backing up in the direction we were going, but keeping our attention to where you guys are hearing these phantom sounds. Yeah, as I step back, you step back, right? Oh, I'm. He's <laughs> <laughs> holding on to your belt loop. <laughs> that way you can watch and I can work backwards. <laughs> So Xenolestimus is going to look for a uh, short tree that he might be able to snap some of the branches on to make uh, like makeshift uh, spikes. He's going to kneel down with his back to one of these spikes and uh, in a defensive stance to try to roll out of the way if anything jumps at him. Okay. Everyone's still moving though, right? You're kind of inching along. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. St I'm gonna stop. So uh, hopefully, I can draw out whatever it is. Yeah, I can say and, uh, maybe they can come up behind me. 
The knees will be stopped. Not the not whatever's following us, but then then uh, the rest of the party can come up behind them uh, as they're confronting me. So I'm going to stop moving and uh, kind of get myself in a defensive position with uh, some tree branch spikes behind me if I can. Okay. Uh, what's everyone else doing? You, you see Zeno stop. Yeah, Leonese is, is is essentially stopped. Okay, your chant. Your you, are you casting a spell? Essentially, she's okay. you're ready to cast a spell. Okay. Yeah. What about Bert and Jake and Rekmit? Carry on, my friends. I will draw them out, and then you can come up behind them and strike. All right, I'm good with that plan. <laughs> yeah, Bert will uh, Bert will stop moving. Not not too far away. Though. I will. I will uh, cautiously be walking backwards, and I will do the same. <laughs> okay. Allow the, the whatever is it the skunk hedgehogs to attack. I'll, I'll be like left foot, right foot. <laughs> 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 well, he's standing around me. If there's anything trying to like flank us, yeah. Okay, so uh, I think it's time to roll initiative because you're not surprised because you did detect that something is there, um, even though you're not quite sure uh, what's happening. So uh, this way you won't actually be surprised. So in Castles and Crusades, we're going to use, we're not using side initiative, so we're not just rolling one for everyone. We're, you're all going to roll a D10. And so initiative is rolled each round. So, uh, so everybody rolls a D10, in other words. Um, yep. some, sometimes I, I use side initiative where I have one of you roll, and then that's just the initiative for everybody. We'll see how it works uh, with just having everybody roll their own initiative. Sometimes it's better to do side initiative. Are there any? Then you can work together and you can decide who's going to go win. Did my roll show up? Are there any modifiers to that roll, Samuel? Nope, it's yeah. a flat D10. Uh, the only Wait. time there's a modifier that comes in is if there's a tie, your, your dex is going to break the tie. Uh, so I so I see a nine from Zeno and an eight from Lenice. Leonice. No, no, Zeno got a four. Oh, is that oh is that, that old? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, Overly I'm, cautious, getting adventurers. Yeah. So that um, I'm I'm not thrilled with Albert uh, Rodeo in terms of the stream here because it's not uh, showing me everything that I want to see. So we might have to. Yeah, because I put down the show rolls and it's. It only shows it after you rolled it. Yeah, so um, let's see. Let me see here. So I see Bert has a 10. Leonice yep. has an 8. And Rekmit has a 2. And I don't see a roll for Zeno. Uh, I just cleared it. Zeno's got a 4. Okay. All right, so let me roll a 10. I'm just going to watch you all and see what you do. Okay. They finish them off from the rear. You'll come in and just like chop them and hack them to bits, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like that we've got Bert going first, and then Leonice, and then then I the think hedgehog. the creatures are going hedgehogs. So, um, how do I hop into the? I'm into Albear, into the game. I see Bert and everyone. But okay. So if you first, if you click uh, on the left hand side down at the bottom, there's a bunch of buttons. There's five buttons. The top one is a little pencil looking thing that'll let you change your name. Ah, okay. And then. Also on the left, there is uh, at the top now, next to where it says party, there's a little square. If you press that yep. square, that'll open up the dice roller for you. Nice. And then the dice are under that, and you can make the dice roller bigger or smaller, and you can actually change the color of the dice by kicking the little palette. 
um, if that shows okay. up for you. Cool. Okay, so do you automatically see my result then, or? So it should show me your result when you roll. If you click the, so after you roll, it shows up in the in the tray, and then it'll show up on the left-hand side. And if you click the X and get rid of it, it goes away, and then nobody can see it. Okay. There is a button down below all the dice, and it'll say hide dice roll or show dice roll, and you want to make sure that's clicked on to show. Yeah, yeah, good oh, point. Oh, okay, yeah, good point. Um, also, if you want to do more than one roll, you can just, uh, instead of choosing a die each time, you can just click the re-roll um, button down in the lower right of the of the dice tray. Okay. Cool. So it shows that I rolled a five. Okay. So. And it showed up on our screens too. Just so yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Everybody can see what everybody rolls. It's kind of nice. So, uh, well, if the cast keeper wants us to keep it kind of private or whatever, too. So, yeah. So it looks like the order is Bert, Leonice, uh, the Hedgehogs, Zeno, Jake, and Reckmit. Does that sound right? Yep. And I'm going to rename every creature with a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bert. All right, Bert will come up. Uh, the oh, there you are, sorry, I was just going to uh, uh, sort of restate the situation for you. So uh, right now, Zeno is sort of crouching with a pointy stick. Um, Leonice is muttering to herself, also basically standing still. Uh, Jake and Rekmit are kind of backing up very slowly, uh, almost tussling with each other to figure out who's going to be in the front and who's going to be in the back. Uh, and there are, you think, maybe four creatures that are, whoops, oh darn it, I just killed the... Oh, and let me clear, be clear, there's no doubt about who's in front and who's in back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happens. I get ale and sauerkraut, and he stands in front. <laughs> Praise his way to victory. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so that's the situation, so... Uh, Bert, it's your turn. You know there are probably four, maybe five creatures. All right. Bert's going to come up uh, maybe like five feet behind and to the right of... Um, it was uh, Zeno who was crouched with the spear, right? Or the, the stick? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not so, crouched yeah, with so the stick. Yeah. <laughs> He's he he he's I, I was sort of making fun. He is setting himself so that he can attack anything that charges him. Yeah, so I'll come up about uh, five feet behind and to the right of him and just kind of ready my club and uh, see if anything comes out. Okay. <laughs> Leonice is uh, so we know the rough roughly where they are. Uh, well, you're. Kind of not sure because um, when Jake tried to focus on them, he couldn't see them. But you you think, you suspect that they are um, sort of in a semicircle behind you, ready to to trounce on you. All right, so I am going to cast a sleep spell in that area where I think they are. Okay. It's a thirty foot diameter, so. Based upon where they are, I'm not sure how many I'll catch, but I'll try and uh, get them. Okay. So that is 2d4, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So a total of six hit die. In the oh. area. So I've cast them into the area where we saw movement. So you obviously can decide how many I uh, physically caught, and then there's six hit die. Six hit dice worth? Okay. okay. Yep. In a 30-foot diameter circle. Um, so you... 
see Leonice make some mutterings and some hand gestures. <clears throat> and then you hear um, some cracking of branches and four distinct thuds. And as you look, you see these four small black creatures fall out of the trees, sort of one by one, just whoop, and a couple of them were high enough that they took out a couple of branches as they came down. Thoop, thoop, thoop. And now they're just laying on the ground. And it indeed looks like these creatures, although when they're sleeping, they look a lot less dangerous. Their mouths are closed. Their, their giant, giant teeth aren't showing. And they're kind of curled up. And they're very limp and that you can see all the fur on them rather than looking like hairless beasts. Ooh, the hedgehogs look as cute as I thought they would. <laughs> and he's now wants to take one as a pet. Someone put a leash on one for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like Jurassic Park. You know, everyone thinks that they're cute. Dinosaurs... You know, oh, let's take one home. No, no. no. <laughs> Never a good idea, right? <laughs> let's take one home. Yeah, not not a good idea. Uh, they're just like those little pets. <laughs> Look, they're almost hairless. No allergic <laughs> reaction. <laughs> yeah, no allergies. Uh, so what would you like to do? Actually, we're still in... Uh... Soon we're still probably in combat, right? We're still in combat, so it would technically be their turn, but they're just snoozing away, snoring lightly, like a little puppy. Uh, Zeno. Uh, if no other Kuthis uh, come out, I, I'm going to try to focus my senses on hearing any other uh, sounds that might be in the area. Okay. Uh, you want to give me a wisdom siege check? It's going to be a six total. Um, you don't notice anything. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything. And that's it. Jake, what would you like to do? Um, first, I'm going to check with uh, Rekmek to see if he did that. And... Uh, then I will slowly proceed forward with my uh, bastard sword ready and go to uh, coup de gras one of them. Okay. Rekmit, what do you say? <laughs> hey, if you yeah. start moving forward, I just let go of him. <laughs> no, when he, asked, he asks you if you did it. <laughs> Which one, the backing up? <laughs> no, putting them to sleep. Or oh. being them unconscious. Well, did, did you do first? that? I don't think I did, but I, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they saw the beard and they just, you know. They fell in all. It's like. <laughs> it, it's it's not all about the beard. That happened. Um, I wouldn't today. Credit. <laughs> I'm sure right. it has to do with it. So I will. I will carefully dispatch one of these creatures if I'm able to this round, Samuel. You can. Uh, Rekmit. It's your turn. How far away are they from me? Probably maybe 10, 15 feet. They weren't that far from you. That's that's why Leonice was able to get them all. They were pretty much right on top of you, actually. They were ready to pounce. Mm -hmm. I am going to slowly back up 20 feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with my sling. But if no one's attacked any of them, I'm going to presume we're going to try and slowly walk away while... My beard put them to sleep. <laughs> I'll thank her later, but I'm going to take credit now. Uh, Bert? Bert will uh, also... Help me out, Bert. Yeah, I say, Bert will also uh, cautiously walk up and, and club one over the head. Okay. Uh, Leonice? Uh, we'll go and dispatch one. Okay. She'll go up and quite happily kill one of these things. 
but she will examine it because she thinks they're kind of cute. They it's are right. kind of cute. They're kind of cute, but they do have sharp fangs. Mm-hmm. Don't and, listen to the jam. They are not cute. <laughs> and they, they, they kind of stink a little bit. They have a little bit of an odor. So it's, it's obvious they have, there's some glandular stuff going on there where they were giving off a scent. So, mm, okay. Uh, so so not you, so there's one more alive. Are you going to dispatch it? As no, so Zeno, uh, feeling like the area is pretty safe and secure, he's going to go up to one of the dispatch ones and examine it, looking for weaknesses, uh, making a mental note of you know claws and teeth, and and uh, that way, if he ever comes across these creatures in the future, yeah, might be able to uh, know how to deal with them better. Okay, um, you notice that um, they're. There's quite a bit of slobber, um, and it's pretty sticky, so that might be something that you would notice. Um, It might be something you could use to detect if you're in the territory, maybe in the future, where they've kind of, if they've been around, maybe they're going to give off some of this odor, and maybe they're going to leave kind of a sticky mucus trail, a sticky saliva trail of some sort. Um, it's a possibility anyway, uh, based on what you, what you're looking at. I'm assuming you're not like, you know, dissecting it and all that. You're just kind of poking around and. Yeah. Just, uh, getting the basic anatomy of it down. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, four legs, a long tail, uh, hair, tuft of hair on the ridge, uh, very sharp teeth, lots of saliva, very thick mucusy saliva, um, Two eyes, long snout, you know, small creature, but almost, almost to the medium size, kind of. It's a, it's a large, small creature. Yeah, the dead one that Zeno is looking at, he's going to try to uh, remove the two front fangs. Okay. How are you going to attempt to do that? I'm going to try to pry it out. With, uh, with a dagger? Um, that's probably, so I guess the question is, are you going to be careful or are you just kind of going to yank them out? Uh, I'm going to kind of scrape up along the gums, see if I can loosen the teeth and then wiggle it back and forth forcefully trying to yank it out. Okay. Um, yeah, you can do that. It's going to take you a few minutes, uh, for each one of those. So. Question, how many have we dispatched? Three are dead. One is still sleeping. There's still one, still one to be dispatched. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Zeno's working on a tooth on one of the ones that I presume the other ones were killed. Then if no one else is going to the sleeping one, I'll pull out my little rapier and go up and try and dispatch it. Okay. Um, unless Jake wants to stop you. <laughs> he was actually ahead of you. No, it's whatever. However he wants to do If he gets there first, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I just know I'm like, okay, it's asleep. <laughs> and no one touched it, and I know it's not dead. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll dispatch it quickly for us. <laughs> okay. And I will come Thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, you're all sort of standing there looking at these uh, bleeding creatures that are, that are dead, and Zeno is prying the two long fangs out of the front of one of them. Uh, it takes a few minutes, and as you're standing there, you notice that the the stench is getting worse. The the smell is is getting worse. Um, I will give a small little prayer to the All Father for saving us through this, and I'm gonna walk away and start heading away from the stench. <laughs> and I'll say, hey, yep, I'm gonna second that too. Yeah. Uh, so, Zeno, I appreciate you trying to get it, but it might not be a good idea right now. Uh, as long as I can get, yeah, if I can get one free, uh, that's good enough for me. I'm going to get out of there also. Okay. Yeah, you can get one, no problem. You could get a second one too if you spent about five, six more minutes, but everybody's going to leave you there, it seems. So. One's good. 
50, 60 feet back. So I can see Zeno, but not be right in the middle of the stench. Yeah, I was going to say, it's still the point of like getting out of where it's so good. Yeah, I was very satisfied with the uh, one tooth. Ready to go. All right. Okay. Uh, as you make your way out of the forest, um, you uh, get out of the forest and a few feet maybe mm, maybe 10 feet outside of the forest, you do see that there is a, 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 a small pile of, well, small, a pile of rocks against the edge of the mountain here, of, of, of Goat Hill here. Um, it's not humongous boulders, but uh, there are some largish rocks that are there that probably could take a closer look. How, how big is this pile? Um, probably 12 feet high. Oh. And they're leaning right up against the... So are there any signs that maybe this was a, some kind of rock fall, or do they look out of place? Uh, it looks like it was a rock fall a long time ago, not a recent one. Okay. I'll back up and try and get a different perspective to see if it would look like any of the formations of the rocks would look like a head, uh, ram's head at any point. Um, as you sort of do that, when you get to probably six, uh, sort of a weird angle, maybe 65, 70 degrees, looking at one of the rocks just from that angle, it looks like the silhouette of a ram's head. Is, oh, cool. is almost etched onto the rock. That looks interesting. Jake, come come and look at this from here. See if I'm just, you know, having dwarf crazy eyes. <laughs> no, you have dwarf crazy eyes. That's not it's been known to happen. I, I walk over behind uh, Rec Mech. There you go. Yeah, That's a good session. That's ain't normal. <laughs> no, this... <laughs> I've never been... This is what it looks like to be behind you? My gosh. That's <laughs> wonderful. All right. I'm listening, but I'm gone for a moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I do the uh, put the fingers up, try to get everything in focus. Yeah, um, kind of to him to say, this is what I'm seeing from this angle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you have to sort of be looking at it just from the right perfect angle to see. Right. Jake. You got, you got to stoop down, though. You got to get down to my height. <laughs> All right. Hey, hold on. You got, hey, I'm not like you, you know, with the wind up there in the clouds. Come on down here. Lower. <laughs> I, I put a hand on his shoulder and bring him down to my level. As you're looking I, at it from that level, and you, you're looking slightly up now at the rock that he's talking about, because you're now your body's lower. And at that angle, you definitely see that it looks like there's been the silhouette of a ram's head etched onto that rock. When you were standing full height, you didn't see it. It just looked like normal rock with weird yeah. crevices and cracks and whatever. Yeah. I see it and I start pointing out parts of it and um, like, wow. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I never saw anything like that. Uh, I don't even know if there's any gods that relate to this you know well, father relates to all these things but don't worry and ram's heads we found it let's go look <laughs> i don't think that's good luck i, I could luck be off because if it's bad luck it's not luck well if it's bad luck what is it then it's hedgehog luck <laughs> is it time for one shot bert Bert? It's always time for lunch. <laughs> breakfast. Don't worry about it. This is a good place for a picnic. Throw him an apple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's go. Ahead. I want to move up and check out that Rams head rock feature to see if it looks like there's an entrance or any kind of cave or any kind of structure there. Like maybe something a dwarf would look for. Let's not be, you know, racist now. 
that was <laughs> There's a lot of assumptions being made here. True, we are pretty good with, you know, openings and rocks and stuff, but... I didn't say that you were mining for gems, either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but those people in that tavern sure seem to think I should be. They do. <laughs> Maybe. Which is always funny to mess with them. <laughs> Humans are like that, though. Eh, all the races have their things. What's my I'm thing, then? I'm used to it. It's no big deal. What, what's my thing? Do I have a thing? Is that what you're saying? I have a thing? What's my thing? Well, you're from a small town, so you have a thing. You're like from a hamlet. You think this Indolefin's a big town. It is a big town. It's huge. No, the capital is... Times, four times I was lost in that place. And from what I hear on the mainland, this is like the backwater city of nothing. You're like a hamlet. This is the mainland. No, that's not what I hear. Ooh. There's more. I hate to tell you this. This is not the mainland. See? Leonis agrees. And she's not. She's from the big places. <laughs> I have a map of the, the mainland. She's from where I've been. This is just a little island in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's not little. But it is See? an island. It is in the middle of nowhere. It's a continent. I read about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what about these rocks? Who knows about rocks who's maybe a dwarf or not a dwarf? I bet I, I'm putting my money on the halfling. <laughs> <laughs> If only we had a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> only it wasn't the portly halfling, he could climb through. <laughs> I got stone crafts. I believe we're at an impasse. <laughs> No, I'm just saying he's defeated by the first uh, pile of rocks. <laughs> so we found a pile of rocks that I thought looked like a ram's head. I had uh, Jake come and take a look. Got him down to my level, and he saw that something fairly similar. So hmm. I guess we should go inspect the rocks. Let's see. Stonework features include new construction, familiar architecture, sliding walls, stone traps, unsafe stone surfaces, all that fun stuff. When yeah, so I'll go up and check the rocks out, see if uh, see if one is loose, and see if any of them are movable. If there's a hole in the ground, I keep an eye out for anything that looks uh, suspicious and trap-like. You mean to do that? Sorry. <laughs> And I'm right there with it because I was trying to check out if there was anything beyond that stone head thing because it was supposed to be what, right in that area. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so did you did you roll a wisdom check or you did not yet? I have not yet because I didn't know. Yeah. Go ahead and, and roll. Is it the plus two or plus four? You're going to get a plus two. Yeah, that's not so good. It's only a seven. I fail. Um, you notice that uh, it's definitely... There's definitely something weird. There's definitely... Um, some kind of odd, you know, when you walk up to the, um, the, the, the ram's head rock, you don't see the ram's head anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it from close up. You only saw it from the weird angle. Okay. Um, but so, it's definitely it's definitely not an accident. There's definitely something there. 
it's possibly maybe magical. Hmm. What was the rumor again exactly about the hit ram's head? Uh, that there's a dungeon, a hidden dungeon underneath. Underneath the ram's head or? Underneath it. Okay, then I want to go to right exactly where that rock was. Keep an eye on it, even though it changes the perspective, and go right to it and search along the ground or see if it's like an illusion or if it's real or not. Seeing as it changes perspective as it suddenly doesn't look like that rock anymore. Okay. Or I want to push Jake to it. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we hey, did Jake. not push Jake through rocks. You That's should go rule number five. Number I five on the list. Right. Special. Are you actually going to take him and push him through it? No, I'm not going to. I will go up and check on my... <laughs> on my... No, I will admit it. It's funny. I just um... don't think you quite at that level yet. <laughs> uh, you feel like um, there's a way to move this rock and that there's something... There's space behind it. Hey, guys. I... I... I'm not certain, but I think this there's something behind or under or around this rock. If you guys could help move it, I'd appreciate it. Well, I you know come over here and just take a look and watch and just see if I see something. Yeah, Zeno will go over there and see if uh, he can help tip the rock over. He's all, well, yeah, Bert will head over as well. And, and Rekvich just kind of backs up and says, there you go, yeah, okay, right there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> directs us. It's like, just push that. <laughs> uh, so, let me see. I think... Who all's helping? Oh, Leonese. Uh, Zeno is helping. Bert's also helping. Okay, and uh, what's what's your strength scores? Everybody who's helping, what's your strength score? Now you know why I backed away. Uh, uh, 11. Zeno's got a 13. Bert's also got an 11. Okay. Oh God! Um, you, working looking together, great. working together with Recmit, telling you sort of how to put your leverage and how to shift your weight so that you're putting the best, the, the best sort of force. Yeah, Zeno, a little more left. <laughs> Half, a little more underneath. Push a little more. You can Any? you can Push slide it open a little bit, like you like like there's maybe a one foot gap. So there is actually an opening there, then? There's an opening, and on the other side of it, there's a small alcove, and you can see steps going down in a spiral staircase. But we're not able to move it further? Not with the current strength that's being used. Okay, I would like to approach, and I will put a small little rune on there. And where's my character sheet? I will put a rune of rending upon it. Okay, and tell the audience what that does. Uh, it tears the target apart. Uh, impacts one item, target up to one cubic foot per level of the rune mark. So it'll only be one cubic foot. How big is the stone? Um, it's pretty large. I mean, it covered a, a halfling size opening. All right, so I'm going to want to do it near the bottom. Try and like break open that, and hopefully then we'll you know, be able to break open or give us a little more space, or maybe be able to push it apart. Okay. Oh, what else does it do? Um, any item on which which is described must make a successful strength save CO equal to the room marks level. Ooh, that's not good. Break splinter. Large items may only break into a few pieces. Fragile items such as glass shatter. Rune may be used against almost any target. It can be used to crack doors, break rock, opening a fissure, that kind of thing. And Zeno's going to go look for a large tree branch. Uh, I'm sure there's one around with all the forest and try to wedge it into the hole that we've already created and use it to uh, like a pry bar against one of the other rocks. Sadly, you're probably going to have to because I don't think it's going to work for my rending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, combination, my character. The, the combination of effort and by the power of Rekmit's beard, which apparently has magical properties now, Really does. Uh, you edge the thing open another, maybe another foot, so that now there's enough room for all of you to sort of 
scoot inside. If you crouch and scrimp, you can probably get through. It's pretty solid. I mean, it's it's going to be hard to... I'm going to have to jump up and down on Jake to force him down in the hole. <laughs> Is the hole going... I will make that going straight into the ground. It there's a gap behind the, so what you move the the rock away, say to the right a little bit, about two feet, and there's a small alcove behind it, which is about halfling high. But you see that there's a, a spiral staircase down. So if you can, crouch, right, I'm going to go ahead and light a door. torch. Yeah. Okay. Actually, can I search around the base of the area to see if there's some kind of trigger? Sure. Something that might have might have missed. Sure. <laughs> can I talk the rock into moving? <laughs> Come on, man, just move over a little bit. I'm doing what I can for you, Rock. <laughs> Trying to help you here. <clears throat> We don't want to uh, tell you. So if we want this rock to move, all we have to do is, uh, you know, that Ludo, just everybody kind of get the same tone and be like, oh, if I get the right pitch. It'll just shatter. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do with my rending. Oh, work. <laughs> right. well, oh no. Uh, so recommend you're going to look for a trigger of some sort. Yeah, I want to see if there's something that we just missed because there's got to be some way to open this other than beating the heck out of it. Yeah, go ahead and make me an intelligence check. I was hoping it was an 18. Shoot. Nope, that's only going to be a 6. Okay. Oh, like the dice for <laughs> Yeah, start rolling dice uh, on your own. Um, you do not find a trigger. But with you searching around, it's pretty clear that this is meant to do this, so there probably is a trigger somewhere. That's what I would have rolled in the roll of that nice. guy. <laughs> we should have been a 16. Yeah. Bert will go ahead and uh, take a look around to see if we can find anything. Say that again. What's Bert doing? You're going in inside uh, the gap. No, he's taking a look around the base oh. for a for a trigger. Okay. Keeping it to go. Now, as a rogue, um, you have special abilities related to that, correct? I have special abilities to finding traps. I don't know if this trigger necessarily would, would count for that. that but counts. um, I would say that counts. Oh, perfect. So then, that would count as a as a prime skill, even though um, intelligence isn't a prime skill for me. That is correct. That's that's my house rule. Yes. So I got a 17, which then I think should pass. Yes, it does. You find a trigger. Um, but unfortunately, the trigger is sort of... Um, it's it's a kind of indented piece on the rock on the bottom edge. But since all of you sort of manhandled the rock to the side, you set it at an angle that no one can press the actual button you can't get enough force in there and enough of your of your hand or anything in there to press the button anyone got a 10 foot pull uh, i actually do have a 10 foot pull <laughs> well we already got the door open right we can all fit in there now you can all fit in there yeah oh we yeah, can so I, I don't know why we're messing around with the trigger still let's just go inside yeah all right let's just head in then what we may want to check for is a trigger on the inside that would close it once you're inside as well, though. At least it could reset. And keep any hedgehogs from entering. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I want to be trapped in by a giant stone, but... Uh... <laughs> on the bright side, you will only be trapped in once. Don't worry. <laughs> Underground is my thing. We like this. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> hey, a having a dwarf with us makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Zeno's, got, Zeno's got a lit torch, and uh, he's going to go inside to the stairs. Okay. So uh, you have to crouch a little bit because it's halfling size. The opening is halfling size. 
but you can easily do that and and go down the stairs a little bit. Um, the stairs are built in, so it's it's not as if you can step on the stairs and like it's open and you can see it's stone. So you'll have to walk all the way down to see what's at the bottom. I'm going to look for like a fifth size stone or bigger and roll it down the stairs uh, just in case there's any kind of a pressure stair or anything. Okay. Um, you can easily find that because this huge pile of rock is there. Uh, you roll that stone down and you hear it hit several stairs and the wall on the way down and then it lands on the bottom and you don't hear any traps or any triggers or anything like that. It looks to be clear. <laughs> Let's advance. And Zeno will start heading down the stairs. All right, right behind you, Zeno. I'm right behind you. I actually have uh, my bow at the ready. Okay. I'm right behind the elf. <laughs> and who's right behind me? <laughs> 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 That's okay. He's blocking anything coming from the back. So, um, the spiral staircase ends in a roughly square room. Um, this area is carved out, but it's pretty rough work. It's not uh, the high quality standards you would expect from, say, a dwarven. Uh, installation it's it but it is it is a sort of it's a built structure it's not a natural cavern okay um this room that you find yourself in is about 30 foot on a side and it's almost exactly square and there are four doors in it in the middle of each uh, wall the spiral stairs come down right in the middle of the room. So there were four doors, basically north, south, east, and west, or any other space orientation? So we come down the middle, and it's like basically two doors, right? An otherwise empty room. We want to go have people maybe like listen at each of the doors, see if they hear anything. That's probably a good idea. And what was the rumor again that we were, or what was the what you had heard again that we we're researching? Just, just that there's a dungeon underneath it. Okay, I thought there was some kids got trapped or stolen or something. They stumbled into it one night, but it doesn't say anything happened to them. Okay. Well, I hope you all like the dark. Well, I do. Uh, I've got a, I've got a torch. Yeah, we've got one torch lit. Yeah, there's a torch. Yeah. There's a uh, torch. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bert will head over to the east door and uh, take a listen at the door, see if he hears anything. At the east door? Okay. I was just going to say the, the room feels unoccupied for a long time. Does it look like there were any other footsteps in the ground, any dust, or has it just been? Uh, there are some, some, a few footsteps. Yes, they look like they look, human, they look like small. humans, and they look small, like little children, sized. Probably not clawed. No, not clawed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that might be a little paranoid. Those hedgehogs are pretty vicious, so you know. I want to go adventuring. I just don't want to go adventuring and die. I don't like being bitten. <laughs> uh, so you want to roll me a listen, so, listen check at the door? Uh, Leonise will actually listen at each of the doors. Okay. Uh, Which one is the listen check? Plus two. Yeah, listen's going to be a wisdom check. Samuel, I think. So wis wisdom check, right? Well, so they're you doing want us to draw the map. Uh, if you want to, I I didn't draw us. How big is four doors? Because I just didn't think it was. How big did you say the room was? 
Uh, it is 30 foot on a side. All right, so we'll do the north door, so add three to this, and it's a secondary. Um, well, while they're doing the listening, Rekbit's going to kind of go around the walls just to see if there's anything odd or anything with respect to Stonecraft. Okay. Seeing as they're probably going to be better at listening, I'll do the whole dwarven looking for strange right. things on the walls. Mm. All right, so we, got north, we went north, east, southwest. So the first two were 19, 19, 7, 9. Uh, okay, so you went north, east, south, west. Yeah. Uh, in the north, you hear dripping water. In the east, you don't hear anything. In the south, you don't hear anything. And in the west... you hear a faint scratching noise. So I'll let everybody know, it's like playing these guys. <clears throat> okay, there's dripping water over there, and to the west, there's some faint scratching. Don't hear anything east and south. Well, scratching sounds bad. Let's stay away from that. Uh, but I feel like the water has to lead somewhere, right? Yeah. So that Sounds good. Let's water. check out the water one. As yeah, like boat, uh, boat for water. As a quick question, how far down did the stairs go into the earth? About 20 feet. Okay. And are we in stone, or is it stone and earth, or...? You're in stone. You basically okay. went into the side of Goat Hill, and then down. And it was all stone at that point, and it was carved out. Right. Okay. Everything was stone. The stairs were stone. All the walls around the stairs are stone. Everything that you're in now is stone. Yep. Okay. And Thank it's you. it's not um, what I was... I think you were away, uh, but uh, it's not really high-quality craftsmanship like what a dwarf would do, but it's it's definitely like a man-made or, a, you know, it's a it's a creature made. It's a built structure. It's not... Constructed. What are the dwarves' materials made of? Are the, Say that again. The door materials, are they made out of wood, banded wood? Um, all four of the doors that were leading out of the first room were made of wood with iron bands. Okay. They look like the wood's really old and decrepit in any way? Uh, not rotten, but definitely old. Okay. Uh, so you're going to the north room? Is that what I'm hearing? And Yes. Just to be clear, yeah, that so. the staircase came down into the middle of the room, right? Correct. Okay. So there's kind of a, a cylinder in the middle of the room that yep. has an opening in it that lets you get into the stairs. Because the yep. stairs were sort of, they had, it yeah, was course. walled. It wasn't just uh, yeah. like open, like like modern uh, spiral stairs, you know, you could see through them basically. Yeah. These were enclosed, but it came down into the middle of the room. Got it. Okay. So on the owlbear uh, for the map maker, if you, um, if you, uh, you can draw a line instead of uh, a square if you want to. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, I don't know what you see in terms of controls. So that's the only reason I'm. Circle, I can do right. Yeah, the only thing was that my line, my lines aren't going to be straight, so I just went with the blocks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I put a little blue circle in the middle for where the staircase goes. Okay. Yeah. We just don't have the corridor to the south. It's just a door there instead. We'll get better at this as we play with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fir that's the thing is the first, uh, the first. Uh, uh, game is as, as what I was saying to Chuck earlier. The first game always has all of the tech issues and all of the oh. you know getting to know you stuff and the the weird yep. kind of oh what's this technology thing we're using now you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, so you heard sound beyond that northern door. Are you going to open it or are you going to listen at it again or check for traps or what's your 
What's your modus operandi here? Do we know that Bert, I think it's Bert, the halfling, whatever, is a rogue yet? Yeah, I'll be pretty pretty open about it. That can be too soon. But, um, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do to survive and make my living. But, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and check it for traps. Okay. He's a rotund rogue. I shouldn't say a rogue, but he's good at yeah, sensing a rogue, such. But, you know, yeah. yeah. You have, you I'm have certain... I'm going to do really well. Yeah, you, you have certain <laughs> necessary skills. That's all. Uh, do you want to make me... Uh, uh, they're not very good here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Linnaeus makes my beard put things to sleep. That's true. Can, can you detect traps? Can you open doors? Look, guys, this door definitely has no traps. 100% trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what did you roll? Open it. I don't know if I showed it, but uh, I, got a, I got a six. Oh. Yeah, no, you don't detect any traps. Um, so who's opening it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rekmit will walk out uh, uh, and open the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rekmit, you see I, beyond the door, I, I, there is a 30-foot long hallway. And um, the dripping is from a puddle of water that's in the middle of the hallway and there's there's a drip from the ceiling there's a single drip that at basically regular intervals drips down and hits that it's a very slight puddle so you know it's not filling up the entire hallway or anything like that and it it's not getting big enough to make a huge puddle so obviously it's going somewhere but it just on a regular interval is about once every two seconds or so you just see one tiny drop of water go from the ceiling which is about 10 feet high as i hold the door open i'll wave my hand and go youth before beauty gentles mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right so the linies will actually go so so it's basically a corridor going north yes with this puddle so there's, will... there's another door at the end of it that is wooden with iron bars oh how far ahead at the end of the 30 foot hallway oh it's 30 foot sorry okay that bit. Um, so Linnies will go. She has a 10-foot pole out. She'll be basically prodding on the floor as she goes, so it'll be a little slow. Okay. She doesn't detect any anomalies in the um, floor in the hallway. Okay, so she'll kind of wander up. She'll, she'll, she'll definitely prod around the puddle. You know, I'll, I'll kind of wish we had. Are there any water hedgehogs? Shallows. <laughs> 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 They'd be very small. We're okay. We're good. We can stamp on these ones if they were. Uh, there are not. Um, okay. So does Lenny's make it to the door? Yes. All right. So uh, she will listen at the door. Okay, you want to roll me a siege check for that listen? That's a wisdom. Yep, wisdom. That is a... Oh, that's a 20. Okay. Uh, you hear the sound of more dripping water. <laughs> hey, I sense a theme, men. <laughs> Guys, come on. It's just a puddle. Bert will uh, come up behind you and check the store for traps. You want to roll me that check? Yeah, I got a 12. You do not find any traps. And I will boldly follow Jake. <laughs> <laughs> so is someone going okay. to open the door then? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the knees will open the door. Okay. Uh, you Jake open the door. This, this the door court. is a little bit harder to open. It's a little tiny bit swollen shut because of the humidity in the next room because it is very humid in there. But it's not that it was trapped or anything. It was just a little bit um, kind of swollen on the inside, though. You can't tell from the outside. The outside is actually fairly dry. Um, but when you, when you finally pop the door open, you see a room that is um, roughly 20 by 30. So it, it, it basically, your, your door opens into the middle of a 30-foot wall, and it 
goes out ahead of you 20 feet. So it's a 20 by 30 rectangle. There is a door directly across the room from you, but in between you and the door is a large circular pool that is um, about 12 feet in diameter. And in the middle of the pool, it, there is a base in the pool that comes out of the water. And there is a statue of a human woman wearing a long gown and holding a spear in her right hand. Uh, as if as if she's going to throw it, right? Like she's going to chuck the spear. Yeah, pointed towards us or away from us? Uh, it is pointed at you. Are there any strange scents or smells or any? Um, the room is so humid that there you can see that there's mold growing on some of the walls, and so that really reeks. But other than that, it does not. There's not an odd odor. Breckman is going to duck down and almost like crawl forward if we move forward. <laughs> um. The the uh, figure in the room is she uh, just a beautiful woman, or is she more divine looking? Um, um she j just looks like a human woman. You don't um you don't recognize her as a religious figure um for any of the okay. deities that you're familiar with. So it's possible she's the figure of a lesser evil deity, but you're pretty sure you're pretty, you're, um, you're pretty confident in your knowledge of, of the neutral and good gods and how they would be presented. Okay. And this doesn't match any of those. All right, cool. Thank you. You also are pretty confident in your knowledge of the really major evil ones. And this doesn't match those either. Right. Cool. And these will go into the room and head to the right. So she'll go in the right corner. So okay. basically southeast. And I'll ask Jake, does that make any kind of religious sense to you? Or divine? That makes a ton of divine sense to me. <laughs> okay, so who is it? It's not a divine god. That's why it's divine. Right? <laughs> sure. sure. I'm going to this is yeah. never upset the cleric. So, uh, Leonice went into the room, correct, and to the right. Yeah. How close did you get to the edge of the pool? No, I didn't. I was skirting the wall. Okay. Okay. You mean she literally walked through the door, turned right, and kept to the wall? Okay. Yeah, because we got what about six feet? No. Yeah, you can Except easily go around it. I'm just, I'm just curious if anybody's like looking in the pool, just you know. And it, no. she stayed far enough away that she can't really see anything. No. She's like seeing across it. Yeah. Does does the statue do anything when she comes in? Nope. All right. So she'll she'll go east. She'll get to the corner. Then she'll go north, skirting the wall. Okay. Um. So this is thirty thirty five. So so she can probably she can reach the pool with a ten foot pole, right? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. So she will. She will. Um. Put her ten foot pole at the edge of the pool and see what happens. Um, nothing. Okay. All right, she's going to wait. Whatever, she's going to wait. Whatever However, since you're are you near you're near that door, right? No, she's at the bow. She's actually on the east. So in she's like corner. right in the middle of the east wall. Okay. Kurt will uh, follow into the room, and seeing that nothing happened when the ten foot pole was prodded towards the pool, he'll go like a little closer to the pool and, and take a look at uh, mm -hmm. the statue in the water. Okay. Um, the so, are you looking for something specific, or what are you? Uh, just kind of coming to the edge of the pool and, and peering at the statue and trying to see if... Uh, first of all, is there any mold growing on the statue? No. Okay. Um, but no, nothing specific. Just kind of looking around. 
Um, you want to roll me, uh, give me an intelligence check. Ooh, that's a, a nat one. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you, uh, you're lucky there are no crit fumbles in this game uh, because you might accidentally be going for a swim. Um, you know, you can play those. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you just think it's like obviously somebody made a shrine to some woman, and like maybe it was somebody's wife or somebody they worshipped, or ah, it's nothing, no big deal. But as you're looking at it, your eyes kind of glance down to the pool, and you see that the pool is about three feet deep, is what it seems like. And the bottom of the pool is covered. In gems and coins. Hey guys, there, there's gems and coins. <laughs> come look, come look. What is the, uh, what's the statue made out of? It's just stone? It looks like it's made of the same stone that is used to make the walls of this place. Uh, Zeno's like gonna go, Zeno's Sorry. gonna go check the statue and see if, uh, it looks like the spear might come loose. Okay, uh, you want to roll me a wisdom seed check? As he's doing that, I want to ask, does it look like it was carved in place? Does the spear look like it's made out of part of the carving or a separate material? Uh, the spear is pretty obviously part of the hand, so it's not. it wasn't like placed in the hand. Um, but the statue itself was um, placed on the pedestal. It was not just carved out of okay. the ground. It's not like the Vedic temples where they carved all that stuff out of the okay. Right. And does the spear look like it's also carved with stone, or does it look like it's of a different material? Uh, this every this whole entire statue is the same material. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so what was Zeno's role? Uh, that's that's a fifteen total uh, with a primary. Okay. Um, you definitely notice that there is a seam in the statue where the arm that's holding the spear is attached at the shoulder. And so it looks like that spear could move. The whole arm, actually, could move. I'm going to try to take the arm off. With how? <laughs> With my hands. I'm going to just see if I can get it loose. So it's, if in there's the middle, a... it's in the middle of the pool, so you'd have to go into the pool. Or and I how suppose, far is I it? Suppose, how far is it in the jump. pool? How far is it in the pool from the uh, the edge? The pool is about a 12-foot diameter, and it's directly in the center of it. So it's probably six, six and a half feet. Hey, you're yeah. going in that pool. Can you I believe the statue zone can move. Say that again. Perhaps I can, perhaps I can throw the halfling or gnome onto the statue. <laughs> No, no, no. The, the halfling doesn't like water, and he's only three feet tall. <laughs> and there's no gnome. There's no gnome throwing allowed. Oh. That is not an Olympic sport. So, um, does, it, does it look like the statue swivels on its base, like the statue can rotate? Um, it doesn't look like it from where you are. All right. So, uh, just eyeballing it, you know, basic wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, I look at the statue and I look at the dripping uh, passageway that we walked down mm -hmm. to get to this room, trying to make any correlation between, you know, dripping water, the spear, you know. Just, you know what I, I mean, Samuel? Like, seeing, like, does anything line up specifically, you know? Like, geometrically speaking? Yes, yes. What? You mean, like, geometrically speaking? Does Yeah, does yeah. Um, it doesn't really look like it. What it looks like is there's a water source in the mountain that is leading to the drip in the hallway. And that was probably okay. also being used to fill the pool by whoever built this structure and maybe they weren't so careful when they built it and they created leaks elsewhere 
but in terms of the geometry, it doesn't look like there's an obvious, you know, uh, like like if you move the spear, in other words, it points directly right. at that and creates a flood or something. That doesn't look like that, no. Okay. Uh, who had the 10-foot pole? Leon, uh, Leonie's had him. Had it. So, uh, Leonie's, perhaps you should try to move the gems or the, the coins on the floor and see if the spear will fire at the pole. Okay. So, Leonie's will, will kind of well, move up a little bit. I'm just going to crawl in and crouch and go to the left. Uh, okay. So, Leonie's, is, she's on the east wall. Mm-hmm. She'll move in, I don't know, three, four feet. Okay. So she's close to the pool. Mm-hmm. So you say it's three foot deep. Oh, yes, yeah, that's about right. And then use the 10 foot pole, see what happens when she actually goes into the water and starts moving the gems. So she's kind of rake, raking the uh, mm-hmm. bottom of the pool, with the pole. Um, so. How much pressure are you putting on? Like, are you, are you trying to like really move these things, or you're just kind of tapping them to see if they move? Like, just make sure they're not fake. Um, I'm putting enough pressure to see if they actually move. Okay. Um, are you trying to also touch the bottom of the pool, or you're just moving the stuff on top? Uh, I'm really just trying to see if these gems and coins are okay. real. Yeah, they scatter when you swing your the end of the pole back and forth the, you know a little goblet goes a gem goes and some coins okay so they're physical they're real and the statue doesn't do anything nope oh if only we had a net uh, so Zeno's gonna dip his finger into the pool just to make sure it's not acid it is not acid uh, I'm gonna slowly step one foot into the pool to see if I can reach the bottom before I put all my, the rest of my weight on there? Uh, Zeno is a human, right? He, he's pretty tall. Uh, Correct. Yes, you, you can touch the bottom of the pool. The water's pretty cold, but you can touch the bottom of the pool with your foot, sure. I'm going to walk over to the statue to see if I can remove the arm. Okay, so... I need you to uh, make me a uh, dexterity saving throw. That is going to be a uh, nine total. Uh, plus the, is that plus the level also? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, no, savings are plus level two, so it's level plus... Oh, level is it level? Plus. Okay. Yeah. I have it actually right here, but yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's a ten, 10 total. Okay. Um, as you walk towards the statue, you're sort of touching the bottom with your feet because you're walking, and you feel the, the gems and the coins and everything move away as you move your foot so you can get good footing. And... Um, you step at one point and you feel the the piece you stepped on kind of shift under your foot a little bit and the statue swivels so that it's facing you and the spear jabs down and does two points of damage to you and then it retracts and i'm assuming you stop moving at that point yeah, I'm gonna. As soon as I get stabbed by the spear, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> How close am I to the statue at this point? Probably three feet. Uh, am I close enough to reach the end of the spear and try to pull it out of her arm? Uh, how tall are you? Uh, five ten. What's I mean, your the spear is stuck in you? The I mean so. You could probably take a couple of steps forward and jump out of the water to try to get the spear, but you don't know if that would cause the spear to attack you again. Uh, is there any steps that I can take forward that would not push the gems? Do I see a clear, a clear path without trying to disturb them? Not really. There's there's stuff all over the floor of the pool. <clears throat> all right, I'll jump for it. 
what if we like threw something on like the other side of the pool and then when she turns to stab that you step forward I was, I was just going to say that actually now that Leonise sees this, she'll actually be, she'll take the pole and be pushing it in the pool. So now you have, you know, essentially two things happening in the pool. Okay. Um, Sounds good. So as you stab into the pool, you're on the eastern side? I'm on the eastern side, yeah. Okay. Uh you stab into the pool and the statue swivels towards you. You hit the ground and you feel the floor of the where you hit shift a little bit. And the statue swi- swivels in facing your direction and stabs down. And if you had been a person standing where you have the 10-foot pole, you would have been stabbed by the spear. So And so as soon as, as soon as the statue rotates, I'm going to I'm going to move to a Get to the arm. Okay. So you're going to climb on it or you're going to jump out on it? Yeah, I'm going to climb onto it and uh, try to remove the spear. Okay. And I will continue jabbing at that point just so you know. It's like, okay, Okay. this is how this thing works. Um, You can easily grab onto that spear. I'm going to need a strength check for you to uh, break the arm off, though. It's pretty solidly built, this statue. It's going to be a, a 19 total. Okay. Um, you you have a hard time breaking the arm all the way off, but you are able to end up breaking the spear so the shaft with the point is no longer operational. And you bend the arm in a way that kind of cracks it, but you're... You're having a hard time pulling the whole thing off, but you did basically disable it. But the statue will still swivel if Leonisa yeah. is still pressing on pressure plates in there. This the the staff or the statue will still swivel towards wherever the pressure plate was attached. But this I'm I'm satisfied with that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step out of the pool and bandage the stab on my thigh. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you walk out of the pool, you hit a couple more pressure plates and the statue swivels towards you and the arm tries to, you know, jab you. But of course the spear is no longer sharp and long enough to reach you. Mm. So it does seems not like we have some much. golden gems for sale. Just for the take. I'm going to crawl up to the edge and reach in and see if we can grab some of those out and see if they're actually gems and gold or not. So how tall is Rekmit? He's five foot six. Okay. Um, he does have relatively short arms versus torso ratio, so you may have to dip in a little. Yeah, so you're probably going to have to put your face in the water in order to get all. I, I will do that. Okay. Yeah, you can grab several coins and a gem or two. As you okay, I'll pull them up. Do they actually look like gems and coins, and not just some bull crap illusion? No, they are gems and coins. I mean, they're not super high quality gems, but they're gems and coins. So, Samuel, once you bandage and it says you heal one to two points, yes. uh, how is that determined? Just roll a 1d2. Got it. And Rekbit slides into the pool. <laughs> you're, just, you're just going around just throwing stuff out, right? You're just like. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we'll, we'll collect it all up. So we'll 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 collect whatever he throws out. Yeah, I'll stop everything up and put it out on the uh, dry surface for us. Jake will be holding on to his uh, belt, as friends do for each other, <laughs> to uh, you know, at times like push him in deeper to get more of the gem, <laughs> or you know, pull him back to you know. <laughs> it's like. Oh, no, he's been down there for 30 seconds. I should pull him back. <laughs> yes. The bubbles stop coming up and pull him back up. <laughs> um, so you, I guess the question is, um, I mean, it, does, it doesn't take you very long to gather all of this. If you all work together, you could probably pull all the stuff out of there in 20 minutes. 
I'm yeah, we're taking we're taking everything. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Okay. We'll take the, we'll take the twenty minutes. Well, uh, you guy who got stabbed, you know, kind of heals up. All right. Um, hey, look, Lord Gosumba just raided us with fifty-seven people or something. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Hello. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um. So, What's going on, Jay? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, you just missed them getting stabbed, but then getting a big pile of golden coins. Actually, it's silver coins and gems. Um. He got stabbed. I acquired the coins. <laughs> that's, <laughs> true, that's true. The dwarf uh, so, got wet. The so the dwarf question, got moist. The question is, do you want to stop and count the loot, or you're just going to bag it up and take it with you? Bag it up and take it. Bag it up and take it. Yeah, we just bag and go, right? Okay. And uh, well, so, I would hand it to the monk who got stabbed. He can count it while they're all gathering up as I'm pulling out of the pool. <laughs> so, uh, ha uh, how many of you got wet? Just as Zeno did. Just the two, right? My pole did. <laughs> Elves in their poles. <laughs> I would have said that I got splashed a little bit. From... Yeah, I was going to say, I definitely probably got some water on me. Okay. So basically, Rekmet's the only one who jumped in the pool to gather up this the loot. <laughs> basically, I threw it out on the edge wherever I found it. They gathered up and took it over to the monk to count it. Okay. Uh, all okay. told, you gathered about... Um... About a hundred and fifty gold worth of silver, but silver coin, right? So, um, and uh, about, um, I mean, it's hard to say the value of the gems because um, probably none of you could uh, evaluate those very well, except maybe Rekmit, but he's you know busy swimming and putting things out. Um, but there's a nice big handful or two of gems. So you've probably, you, you can estimate at least a couple hundred gold worth of gems there. So that's a pretty good haul for a couple people getting wet and one person getting stabbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not too bad. <clears throat> All right, time to go. We have a door to the north. Well, do we want to see the doors to the, go back? Uh, so are you, what do you yeah. Did anybody check the door to the north for traps? I can go uh, do a roll on that. Well, that's pretty good. 18. Mm. Plus. If Bert doesn't find any traps, Rexman boldly walks up and opens the door. <laughs> Um, you do not detect any traps. But there is an odd smell coming from the other side of the door. What kind of smell? Does it smell like the same creatures we saw in the forest? No, it's not quite that uh, musky and putrid. It smells like... Um, Rotting vegetables or rotting fungus. Mm. Is is the does the door open inwards or do we push it open? Uh, the door opens inward. Yes. Okay. All right. Rexman opens the door, pushes it inwards, and says, "Feel free, gentles." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have shown you the way. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a pattern here. Uh, I'm right up there to help him out. <laughs> okay, so the the room is once again a stone room. Um, it is a rectangle that opens into an oval on the western side. So uh, when you open the door, the room extends out 30 feet in front of you. And to the right, there's only 10 feet of room. But to the left, after 20 feet or so, the room opens out into a bigger oval kind of shape. Okay, so if you imagine a rectangle with an oval 
to the left of it. That's kind of what this room looks like. Once again, like the rest of the uh, of the of this place, it is a built structure. It is a constructed area. It was carved out of stone, but it's roughly hewn. It's not smooth. It's all the same stone that it's been before, but um, but it's a weird shape. How far uh, does that extend? Is it five, ten, or fifteen feet out? It is thirty feet in out in front of you. 10 feet to the left and 20 feet to the right. And then it extends out in a big oval or sorry, uh, 20 feet, 10 feet to the right, 20 feet to the left. And then it extends in an oval to the left. Like what he's got up there is the purple little thing that goes seven and a half feet. Close enough. Yeah. And I, I can't make the circle any bigger. Otherwise it'll be bigger than the room. Yeah. It's yeah. Fine. Hey. There is also a, yeah, remember, we're just, this is just for your knowledge, right? We're not really doing like anything tactical. So it's not as if you're going to use that as a battle map or anything like that. Um, right. There's also a door, by the way, on the eastern wall. And as you are sort of standing, peering into this room now, I'm assuming you haven't entered the room yet. You're just kind of standing at the door. Um, but as you open the door, that rotting vegetable smell hits you in the face even more. It looks Do we like, see any rotting vegetables inside? Well, it Sorry. looks like someone planted, brought, brought in soil into this room and planted a garden. And didn't succeed. And, and well... Didn't succeed, but, um, you know, I mean, this is old and there's, there's still, uh, organic matter here. It's not completely putrid as if it rotted away eons ago. It's freshly rotting fruit. Yeah. And the fruit would give you that kind of earthy tone with, especially if there's a mushroomy smell, you can throw a mushroom type micated material within it. Putrid would imply some kind of uh, meat type source that's rotting. So, yeah. So we got more of a rotting vegetable matter, which could be utilized as a base for like. And if there's a mushroomy smell, I mean, I don't know anything that mushroom that could harm us, but it's something to be aware of. Yeah. Hey, but you know, could be good for the cabbages. <laughs> or for the special mushrooms. Those very special mushrooms. That's true. Okay. Do you want to work our way over to the door on the east side, then? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Me and these will kind of go in, walk along the wall to the right, go up to the door and listen. Okay. Uh, if if you happen to look over into the area where the room sort of spreads out in an oval, you see that in the middle of that oval is a big uh stake <laughs> with a scarecrow hanging on it there's a scarecrow how big is the scarecrow you said a big scarecrow um like i mean well the size? stake the stake it's hanging on is above the sort of plants that are in the bottom and so the scarecrow is sort of elevated above that so it's in it's in the air attached to a big stake a wooden stake in the ground uh, the scarecrow is, is sort of regular size. It's the size of a human. Okay. Are you right out, across from the door? As we walk in or work in, I was like, do we want to go check that out or do we want to avoid it? Well, if we avoid it and go into the other room and it comes up behind us, that's not going to be good. Yeah, that's a fair point. This just seems like if it's off the ground... I'm wondering what's in the ground. Well, and it's pointing right at the door, I'm assuming. It's facing the door. It is facing the door, yes. Hmm. Um, so trigger the trap that we expect is there and be ready for it? <laughs> I'm just wondering what's exactly. I'm thinking. So I've got the uh, the shaft of the stone spear that I grabbed from the uh, 
from the statue. I'm going to throw that at the scarecrow, uh, hoping to stick it right in the chest just to see if anything happens to it. Okay, roll me an attack roll. That's going to be a 14 total, I believe. Oh, well, that would be range, so 13 total. Um, the spear flies true, but, you know, the scarecrow is kind of made of this, it's like this, it's almost like a, a burlap sack, right, that makes half of its body. The spear goes through the burlap sack that has the stuffing in it. And sort of, and it's sort of in the side. Like if you, if it was a human, it would be like their torso, and it would have gone like it would have sort of skirted the edge of their torso. But it goes through, and it kind of rips the burlap sack a little bit, and there's a little bit of hay, hay kind of wheat stuff sticking out. But the spear then goes beyond that, and falls to the ground. Excellent. All right. So, so it, doesn't, it doesn't appear to be alive. It did not have any reaction. The, is there vegetable matter underneath the scarecrow, essentially? Yeah, the rotting matter? rows of, of the crops all <clears throat> in that uh, <coughs> shaped area. Is it like crops or rotting matter piled up? It's it's like crops that were planted that are kind of rotting on the soil. Okay. What do they look like? They look mushroomy shaped or they look like some kind of leafy plant shape? Most of them look like like something that uh, grows in the ground but has a, 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 a like a carrot that has the sort of stems and leaves coming out or potatoes that grow all the way in the ground but then have, uh, you know, or chives that come out. But most of it is all wilted over and, you know, some of it is like lettuce type things that are kind of wilted over. But there was no reaction from the ground and the spear point or piece fell into it? I would like to work my way over towards the crops and investigate them. Okay. Um, most of them look dead. Some of them look like they're just barely dying. So something's been... So these were planted relatively recently, like this season. If... Within 30 to 60 days, based on what I'm guessing these type of crops are. But given that they're growing underground, I don't necessarily know as much. I mean, I, yes, I'm a dwarf. I didn't grow stuff underground. Hmm. Except for special mushrooms. All right, so we have... All right. We need to go to the door and okay. we'll listen. And Rekmit will... Pull out his rapier and try to probe slash pull up one of the ones that are not fully dead yet. Like they look like they're still okay. Try and get a better feel of what it is. What kind of crop this is. Um. So you're going to pull one out? I'm going to essentially use the rapier to kind of probe underneath it. If it's like a carrot, mm -hmm. take out a longer angle to try and pop it up. See if it'll pop out of the dirt or whatever, just to get a feel for what the the root plant is for, like the carroty type or whatever structure one that doesn't look like it's as dead. Yeah. So when you do that, you kind of you wedge out like a parsnip, big white parsnip, really healthy. But it doesn't look different from a regular parsnip, that considering it's growing underground. No, but it does have a little. There's like a little string attached to the middle of it. It looks like. Where does the string go to? It looks like it goes into the ground. Hmm. That's intriguing. They don't have a shovel. So that we try and pull this this way for. I don't have one because I couldn't afford to carry it. I mean, you could just reach your hand down. I could. <laughs> <laughs> Helpful tips from the from the CK. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Rick, hey, pull this out. Do it. Do it. Touch it. I I go through my backpack and I pull out a small shovel. <laughs> okay. And if he like basically pull the crap towards us, I'll be ready to cut that little string. Okay. Uh, Does anything strange? 
you're going to use your shovel to pull it forward? Yeah. Okay. You pull it forward and the parsnip comes towards you and dragging along behind it is the string and the string is attached to a small leather bag. Like the size of a belt pouch. You know, little... It's a trap. Bury it. Kill it. Chop it. Okay. I'm here to pull the belt pouch towards us. Okay. You do. Are, are you in the front and am I behind you at this point? I think we're side by side ish. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to jump behind you. Oh. Got it. Got it. You know that maneuver? Yes. Duck and cover. You yeah. jump down. Tactical retreat. <laughs> Samuel, I'm going to be keeping a list of all of our maneuvers. I'm redistributing my force. Guard his rear. Wait. Sorry, who's talking? Oh, um, we're just going to mark down our maneuvers. Uh, this is the duck and cover. Tomorrow we're going to do the... Uh, what is it? The, uh, the snap and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <that's> just... <laughs> so oh, now, now you're looking at a big parsnip, like a really nice, healthy parsnip. But the stems and and leaves coming out of it are dead. But it's attached to a small bag, small sack, small, small belt pouch kind of sack. I will I open the pouch. See what's inside. You pick it up to look at it, or are you just trying to open it like with your dagger or something. I will try to open it with my rapier or dirk, whatever works okay. better. Uh, the leather of the bag is very old, so as you try to poke and see inside of it, it kind of almost falls apart. But there's a gem there, a little ruby. Hmm. <clears throat> Jake, I found a ruby for you. And I take the parsnip. I wonder, I wonder if the, uh, the whole garden is planted with little pouches underneath. Yeah, yeah, I'm wondering if there's quite a few that look uh, not quite dead, right? Because okay. I, I may have gotten lucky. All right, seeing what's happened, uh, Bert will go start trying to dig up one uh, that looks not quite dead. Okay. Um, what are you digging it up with? And where? Are you question. are you near Rekmit and Jake, or are you in the rectangular part of the room, or...? Um, I guess I'll be nearish them. That's kind of where, uh, where it seems there's quite a few that are not quite dead, right? Okay. Um, and, um, I guess I... Go ahead. I don't have anything really to, to dig it up with, so I guess I'm just using my hands and just kind of like pulling at it and uh, digging at the dirt. Okay. Uh, you pull out a big turnip. Big, nice, healthy one. The top, once again, is kind of dead and dying over, and it has a string attached to it. And there's a little bag attached to the string. I'll go ahead and open the bag. Um... Leonice and Zeno, give me a wisdom siege check, please. 14. Uh, wait, no, wait. That's not a... Yeah, it is a 14. Uh, uh, Zeno also got a 14. Which is one, but that's a 15 on a secondary. Um, so it's uh, not, Zeno not got a 14 on primary. Say that uh, Zeno got a 14 on primary. Okay. Um, you notice that as Bert pulls out the bag, uh, the scarecrow kind of almost turns its head to where it's looking towards where they are. Uh, Bert, in that bag, there is a nice malachite gemstone. The All scarecrow right. is moving! Uh, hearing he that... shouts out. Yeah, hearing that, uh, 
will not touch the Malachite gemstone. We'll just kind of drop it and start backing away. Okay. Keeping an eye on the Scarecrow here, see if it does anything. Zeno is going to rush forward with his torch and try to ignite the Scarecrow. Nice. Okay. Uh, Leonese will take a bow out and be ready. And Rekman's going to grab that Malachite gemstone. <laughs> nice. Good job, Rekman. Um, so, Zeno, uh, make me uh, an attack roll, and then we have to roll initiative. <laughs> going to be a, is this going to be a melee attack? Yeah, because you're running I would assume. to uh, to light it on fire, so you're... And it's going to be a 19 total. Okay, that's going to hit. Um, roll me... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stab the torch right in the part where the spear already ripped it and the hay is coming out. Roll me 3d6 damage. Is going to be three, four, five total. Okay. Five altogether. Uh, one of the oh. dice knocked over one of the other dice. Yeah. It was a three. Uh, okay. Yeah, it would have been five altogether. But if you want to count the dice knocking the other dice over, it's four altogether. I'll take the five. Uh, and now everybody roll initiative. I rolled a ten. Ooh, that's bad news. <laughs> Try this on the darn board again. I just rolled a die because I didn't. I didn't necessarily like that allegory thing. Okay, I like the die better. I got a ten. Okay. <laughs> uh, Zeno, Zeno has an eight. I can go last too. I don't care. Uh, Jake has a six. Jake has a six. Uh, what did uh, Rekmit? Oh, Rekmit got a ten. Zeno got an eight. Jake got a six. Bert got a two. Bert got a lousy two. And who am I missing? Uh, Leonice. Leonice got a. What did I say? A six. Okay. Oh, we gone. That's because I deleted. Okay. Um. Between Rekmit. And the Scarecrow, I think Rekmit probably has a better dexterity. So I'm going to say Rekmit gets to go before the Scarecrow. Right now, the Scarecrow is on fire, but it is within melee range of Zeno. And it's angry. <laughs> so. Well, what's its dexterity? It had upset. Truly, what's its dexterity? Because uh, I actually made moves. It's a 10. He wins. <laughs> okay. Uh, what you all notice in time is I'm kind of a bumbling, fumbling dwarf. <laughs> I have a nine. This will be fun. <laughs> um, so uh, the scarecrow pulls its arms off of the stake where it was up, and it tries to jump onto. Zeno, and maybe I'll use I'll use Albear for this. Um, and it's going to try to pummel and punch um, Zeno. And the first roll is a seventeen to hit, and the second roll is a three. So one of those might hit you. What is your AC? Twelve. Okay, so the first one is going to hit you, and that is going to do, um, darn it, come back here. That's going to do six, six damage. Ouch. I have a question. Yes. So if everything goes in the same 10 second time frame, yes. would I be able to put a rune on him to absorb that damage during this 10 seconds, or is it just going to go kind of as order dexter initiative order works i would say you're doing it at the same time right so what's the rune do it's going to be like a rune of shielding that'll allow him to absorb 1d10 plus one for that round okay i'll allow that to happen before he takes the damage roll the 1d well, 
I know because I'm like next in the round, but I would see him getting hurt. So I'm trying to put the shield on him, and I know if it's all simultaneous. It makes it kind of weird, but I also think, yeah, it's kind of a cool way to do it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. happening. I, that's that's why I specifically put that in the character generator, you know, guidelines or my house rules. That it's to me, it's simultaneous. So basically. Zeno ran up and stabbed this thing with the torch and it pulled yeah, its yeah. arms down and went to attack Zeno and you're running over there to intervene. So basically, things I'm next, what I'll do is it's 10 plus one. Right. I'll put the rune of uh, shielding upon Zeno. Okay. And then it should absorb that six points of damage for him. Okay. And it's only this round because at first level, it's only one round of shielding. Okay. Uh, the other thing that happens is Zeno loses a point of constitution temporarily. And he's being helped there. by a creature that is on fire. So Ooh. if he doesn't get the creature off of him, <laughs> he will take fire damage. He'll take fire damage too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's he's in deep doo-doo, but that was the Scarecrow's turn and that was Rekmit's turn, and now it actually is Zeno's turn again, because the the uh, the torch was the, basically the surprise round. So Zeno is going to uh, try to break free of this fiery bear hug as like, much as he likes a warm cuddle, uh, but he is going to try to strike the creature in the chest with his uh, monk palm attack okay. and uh, knock it, push it backwards. Okay. Roll so I'm gonna try and push it. I'm gonna try a push attack at a negative two. Oh, that was, it, it teetered on the nat twenty, <laughs> uh, but that's gonna be that's gonna be an eight total. That is not enough to push it away. Anything else you'd like to attempt? I uh, I mean I want to get out of its grasp, but I don't know if I I can't move right. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can move, you can do a half move on a turn that you make an attack. The problem is if you move away, he's going to attack you. So if he's holding on to me and I half move, can I carry him with me? Um, sure, but he's still going to attack you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to half move uh, down to the room to the south with the fountain. Okay, that's okay. You get about halfway there. Um, let, uh, let me roll an attack roll for him. Uh, oh, so he gets to attack uh, not on his turn just because I'm moving with him? Yeah, but Ooh. yeah, but uh, don't worry, he missed. <laughs> I rolled a seven, so okay, yeah, because he's the, he's trying to avoid being moved. But um, so basically, that was him trying to push you away, which counts as an attack. So, um, all right, so he failed at okay. that, and that makes it Lenisa's turn. Lenice right. so, will. Um, she's just going to run and charge and see if she can knock this thing off. Okay. And definitely not. <laughs> Natural one. Oh yeah. Nope. That's not going to work. Um, just flying across the room. Right. Waxes the wall. <laughs> uh, Jake. Um, Jake's going to uh, <clears throat> try to take the bastard sword and uh, sever into it. Okay, go ahead and roll me an attack roll. Um, no, that, that'll be a mess, for sure. <laughs> That's a no, I take it? Correct. Uh, Bert. Uh, Bert's going to do one of his rogue things. Uh, he's going to try to get behind it and make a, uh, a move silently roll so he can do his back attack. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, make the move silently roll first. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a 19 plus 1 plus, yeah, so that's a 21. Okay. Yeah, he does not notice you. He's too busy trying to get uh, Zeno to let him go. Uh, go ahead All and right. make your attack. Yep, so we make it a plus four to hit, and we do double damage. Right. So that's a 14, goes to an 18. That hits. And we do a d6 plus one. So if it's double damage, I'm just doubling the dice roll, correct? Uh, and then yeah. adding my plus one. 
Uh, okay, so it'll be 11 points of damage okay. with the club. Okay. Uh, you do the damage, but um, it is still holding on to Zeno, and it is its turn. Um, it is going to attempt to punch Zeno to make him drop him. I thought he wanted to hug me, and now he wants to let go? <laughs> Yeah, right. It's a very like, conflicted Make a good mind, man. Oh, that's a 15. Does that hit? It does. Okay, and then you're going to take, ouch, six points of damage and one more constitution point lost. Temporary, unless you die. Okay. If you get down to zero, you die. Got it. Um, and that's his turn. Reckmit. Well, hell. Yes, I could do shielding at him again. That'll be my third for the day. Yeah, actually, I will do that. I will, on his other shoulder, draw a rune of shielding again upon him to absorb those six hit points. Okay. So roll a d10 plus one? No, it's just ten points plus oh, one. So it'll plus one. Okay. That so, all right. So I you... thought it was a d10, but I was wrong. Okay, got it. So, Zeno, you don't take that six damage, but you do take the con point still. Uh, and now it's Zeno's turn. You can probably, uh, so he broke free. He did not. He did not break free. He 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 did damage, but he didn't actually break. He's still standing there. You could grab onto him and try to drag him to the pool if you wanted to. Well, I mean, I was only going to do that to try to put out the flames that were burning my beard. But uh, if he let go of me, I'm just going to strike him. Okay. Go ahead and roll the attack roll. Uh, so I'm going to try to punch his uh, scarecrow head off. It's going to be a 12 total. That is a miss. Leonice. Leonice. So this thing is now free. She's going to go and try to whack it with her staff. Okay. That is a nine, which is a miss. That is a miss. Jake, there's a flaming um, scare scarecrow standing there. Well, we will destroy the flaming flaming scarecrow flee um ac 16 that hits how much damage uh, the 1d10 plus 2 Uh, seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, as Jake slices into the scarecrow, it kind of, you see some tufts of straw come out and the head kind of lulls off and falls over and the body falls in half. And now it just looks like some flaming uh, straw. dried hay, straw, okay. and some, you know, little barley and wheat in there. And it's just sort of low-level flames on the ground now. It is now gone. So we are out of So combat. after it after it completely burns up, um, uh, I'm going to stamp out any embers and then go through the ashes. Is there anything in the ashes of the Scarecrow? Nope. Well, I mean, I think we can dig up all the gems now if we wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, might as well, right? Don't well. forget the turnips, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are good-looking turnips. So you spend... You're, you're going to only pull turnips? Well, turnips Wait. in the bags. Oh, you had other plants there, two cabbages. Yeah, there's there's other there's other kinds of plants. Yeah, no, I think we're going to check them all out to see if there's other stuff, different things under the other plants. Even the ones that look like the, they're already withered away. Okay. Um... Uh, so in total, including the ruby that you found and the malachite, you find three other plants that have little sacks with gems. And they were all clustered right in that area, right where you first pulled out the the, the first gem, the first uh, living parsnip plant. Um, 
the third gem. So you got a, a ruby and a malachite. The third one is a blue jade. The, la the fourth one is an emerald. And the fifth one is a white pearl. So basically there were five or six, five, five different five, gems five different in total gems. under all the plants. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and with that, you know, it's about time for us to finish up. So you are ending down in the dungeon. And I want to do a quick 15 or 20 minute debrief for us um, because that's part of the shtick of this episode. We've only really been playing for three and a half hours because we had technical difficulties in the beginning. We didn't start till a little bit later. Uh, so normally we'd be done by now, right? But um, because we sort of shifted our starting. So I'm sorry about that. We'll try to not let that uh, happen too much in the future. Um, so here's here's the thing. Um, what do you think? I, 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 the, the thing I, the thing I, I, I sort of chuckled at internally is, um, I don't know which of you said it, but it was something like, um, gee, for such a small town, there's a whole lot going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question is, what do you think? Do you, do you think this is a, a, a little environment that you could actually, uh, tool around in for a while? Oh yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. If each, if each one of the rumors that we got pans out to be something, yeah, then there's a whole lot to do. Oh yeah, because we're, we're we've headed east. I've got stuff to the northwest plus a bunch of other random stuff. So, and we haven't even yeah. So this is there's a lot we could do here. Yeah, you so know, and, it, and it would grow, right? Yeah. I mean, you, so I I love old rumor tables. But um, I'm not big on false rumors. What I'm big on is twisted rumors, right? They're not mm -hmm. false, but they're something wrong with the rumor is more probably mundane than what's actually going on and possibly possibly skewed or embellished one way or the other. So it might sound more dangerous than it is or it might sound less dangerous than it is. Um, right. So, so, so generally, you can probably count on those rumors being true things. That doesn't mean you. That doesn't mean that you have to investigate them all, or that I'm expecting that you investigate them all. But they are things that are there for you to look into if you are interested. Basically, they're all based in some sort or some kind of reality. Right. Right. Yeah. But there could be twists to all of that. Right. Exactly. Cool. Right. Yeah. Th th this is not puzzle solving trying to work out which rumors are right and which ones are wrong it's like there's a basis of fact to all of them mm -hmm. right which means you know, they're all valid to go and look after mm -hmm. right and they all have some connection to the overarching thing that is going on here now whether you all end up investigating that or just kind of ignoring it and you know it, that's it's not necessary for this campaign that you follow a specific storyline. Um, it's there if you end up following it or if you end up interacting with it or you tangentially touch pieces of it, it's there. Uh, there's some stuff going on in the world and, you know, that mm -hmm. stuff is going to be going on regardless of your choices, right? And so you'll be able to affect the way certain things turn out and sometimes you'll choose to not investigate something and so you won't affect how that turns out, so... Yeah, so that was what I was trying to work out from the rumors. Like, so with the, with the question I have is, with the rumors troll, they will clearly had part in the world, but were they random and who you gave them to? Because I couldn't, I was trying to work out if there's any linkage in my rumors. So what I did was I, uh, I just made a rumor table and mm -hmm. then I put oh, okay. numbers on it and... And there, there aren't that many rumors, right? So there's, you know, it's not, there's not a hundred rumors and then you all rolled so that you all got different numbers. So, so there's groups like, you know, some of them had, you know, a span of, you know, if you rolled between 31 and 38, you'd get that rumor. And so if one of you rolled a 32 and one of you rolled a 36, you're getting the same rumor. Um, yeah. But it was okay. random based on your roll. And then, and then for every person, I gave you an extra third one that was either because I wanted 
the way I did it was I wanted at least two people to have each rumor. So of uh-huh. but remember, there's a player, there's a player missing, right? So there were six of you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so oh, true. all of you got one of the same rumors as one of the other six. And all of you also got two rumors that the other six did not get necessarily, depending on the sure. random rolls, right? Okay. So, so I kind of tweaked it, but I didn't. I, like your random roll was just your random roll, so you got whatever you rolled. Got it. And I will state this as an out of context: none of the rumors that have been shared so far are ones that I had. had. Yeah. So. So it should be interesting. I, yeah. I've only shared one rumor. <laughs> I think we had three out there so far. Yeah. We had, is it only uh, two? It might have only been two because there was the half hill and then the tunnel. So there might not have, there might have only been two. I, can't, I thought there was a third one. But... I, th- I think that, yeah, I think there was a third one. I think you're right. There was right, the, uh, the wizard, right? Who was resurrecting yeah. corpses or something? Yep. I had the wizard one. who was resurrecting corpses. And then we had Le- Leonese, whether it was a rumor or not, mentioning something about, I don't remember if it was in, in, in group. About looking for somebody, an old acquaintance or relative or something. Oh, yeah, that was that was that was the reason why I was on the ship. Yeah, that was pretty reason <laughs> right. why I was on the ship. But you didn't mention it to us in, in our company, did you? Sorry, did you mention that while you yeah. were in our company? Or was yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I, it was it was like why I was here. It's like yeah, I was traveling to the mainland to, to find a relative, but it wasn't. I just wanted to make sure whether or not we knew you had actually said that that that's what you were looking for. Oh, yeah. Or not. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't a deep mystery, but my rumor, but I, I did mention that I had the rumor about the wizard who'd gone, who'd been digging yeah. up corpses and was banishing onto the Northwest because somebody else had a rumor that was linked to that. Right. I think I, I think mine may have been related to that about the uh, Barrow Mounds. So no, it could not be. And who had the glow? Was that the glowing? So the, who had the glowing rumor? That was the Half Hill rumor. Yeah, that, I had that one. The uh, greenish sky over half hill. Yeah, so that's, but that is in the same direction, right? If I remember correctly, that's like northwest. Okay. Yeah, but, half hill is northwest. Didn't know about the wizard. Someone mentioned the oak woods, but that would have been southwest. I think the reason we went with the goat hill one because it was still clo- really close to town. So there's um, one. There's one other thing I want to talk about before we before we end up leaving. And that is something I mentioned at the beginning of the first combat that you had in the forest. And that was, um, actually maybe I didn't, maybe I mentioned it in the, in the room with the pool. I don't remember, but, uh, I mentioned something about how, uh, there's side initiative, right? So when I'm talking about side initiative, what I mean is, uh, each side in combat just rolls one initiative die. And then everyone on that side goes, uh, you know, so basically whichever team wins, um, then the, that team gets to go first and everybody on that team gets to go. And so they all get to take all their actions and then, you know, or you can roll, you know, individual initiative. The, the benefit individual initiative has is that, um, it's a little easier to start adjudicating actions. I don't accidentally forget somebody. I don't, I don't forget who's taken a turn and all that stuff. I, it's easier to keep track of who's had what in what round. Um, the benefit of side initiative in my mind anyway, and this is why I'm bringing this up because I want to know what your opinion is. The benefit of side that side initiative would have to me, along with you being able to sort of strategize what you're doing and plan who gets, who's going when, um, it also makes it so that it the combat feels more simultaneous, you know. And we ran into this with Rekmit's casting, right, where he he sort of absorbed that damage that was done to Zeno. And I allow that because it is my like the game is meant to be that that combat round is all simultaneous, so all this is happening together. And so that makes sense to me in my brain. For some people, they don't like that or whatever, but for me, I like that. And so the question is, do you think it would be easier to sort of emulate that kind of feeling with side initiative, or should we keep doing individual initiative? I, I'd like to try the side initiative because, you know, in most of the games now, you just have the individual. So I'd like to play it with the side just so I can feel the difference in play. Okay. Yeah, I've done both. When I run my game, I do individual initiative. 
and so it's simultaneous if you get the same score, and then you know it it is literally simultaneous. So okay. if you come to get killed, you still get a strike. Okay. But yeah, both both work. It's like there's no good or bad. But I, I want to know that it worked out in my favor the way we did it tonight, where I could just block the damage. Right, right. Because if we had done side initiative and you had gone, you had chosen to go before Zeno, then that right. wouldn't have been possible. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So yeah. It's an interesting, even though with individual initiatives, it made it kind of an interesting, it still was sort of side, but it was allowing me to react in a way outside of all the other initiatives where it was just really, you're in order. Right. And what happens, happens. And if you die, there was no simultaneous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was the first time even with simultaneous, even though it was an individual initiatives, the simultaneous made it kind of an interesting strategical uh, way to apply my skills as a room mark to actually be much more useful than I'd actually thought it would yeah, be yeah. until I got higher level. Right, right. Good. Okay. Well, maybe we'll try side initiative next session, next week, and cool. see, see how that works, and then we can revisit that again and make a decision. Um, to, me, to me, for bookkeeping purposes, it doesn't really matter honestly it's just a shift in okay i have to do it this way now versus doing it that way um but i'm i'm all for that this if this is simultaneously we deal with it as if it really is simultaneous so and you saw that in action tonight yeah i like that yeah so uh yeah, so, uh, yeah go ahead no i was gonna say if you are gonna run side then it is truly simultaneous so everybody gets to um to act mm -hmm. and the results so you can do what you want and yes you're right we you know, it's like, okay, you go first or you go second, but you can start to think about who actually acts in turn. Um, so you have to make sure, like, so, so no results are, are done until the end of the turn. Right, right. But if, you, all, do in, yeah. if you do individual, you do also have the option of holding your action. So, you know, holding it's like, I'm going to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. So, but Which, both work. With my character, at hey, the, Samuel. I would hold my action because I'm really much better at Helping you guys out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but I, I'll work the way we do it. I'm not dead yet, so I'm happy. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, both work, and it really doesn't matter. Yeah. So I, I would actually say, which is ever easier for you to run, is the way you do it. Well, let's see it in action and see. We'll, we'll make a decision after next session. Um, mm -hmm. Who was hollering at me? Hey, is Samuel. You? As far as the, as far as the uh, temp. Uh, the temp stat loss, how does that get healed? They, you have to rest? Yeah, if you if you rest and you have a good night's rest, that'll come back to you, right? It's very temporary. The, the one, one point at a time, or it all comes back? It'll all come back at once, yeah. yeah. Um, now, that's just for that creature. There are other creatures that have that, that it takes longer. In this case, it's once. It's one good night's sleep. Um, okay. There's one last thing I want to mention before we go, and that is that uh, Troller Games is having a stream tomorrow at five mm -hmm. o'clock Eastern, o which is what is that four Central, mm -hmm. and that the it's a it's a tips tips of the trade right uh, tips and tricks of GMing, and the topic is alignment. So yeah, DM tricks of the trade. Um, so tune in for that if you're a fan of that. It's Stephen Chenault, the the president, CEO, and all around. CK of 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 C and C, and so usually what he has to say sparks good conversation. If we don't go off on a tangent and talk about movies and television shows, yeah, and exactly. books, <laughs> history, or, or, or Dr Pepper, right? You know, like... <laughs> um, and then one last thing before we go, um, I'm trying to put a lot of the aired flavor in here. And so I, I know I, I could talk for hours, by the way. So eventually somebody's going to have to say, no, no more one last things. Uh, but um, I'm trying to put a lot of aired flavor in here. So you're going to see that start coming out a lot more as we go. So um, I hope that comes through. And if there's ever a point where you feel like this isn't coming through, let me know and I'll, and I'll amp it up. Um, so, you know, the, the, there is a reason this is this campaign is named Pools of Narhite. So, um, and other than that, I don't really have anything. Does anybody else have anything that they want to make sure they say before we sign off? Um, I would just say, yeah, that's cool. That's kind of what I was trying to ask a little about the race, racial mm -hmm. ideology with respect to Eric versus the player's handbook. Yeah. 
just to get a feel for where we're going to go with that and how we're going to play that out. Because I'm actually pretty cool with that. I think it's it's, it's neat to kind of do that with this setting because it's a little different mm-hmm. towards fantasy with the way Stephen did his and Davis did his settings. Yeah, yeah. So it's there is there is some of that racial tension that will come out and and you you kind of see they look at the right there's these stereotypes that that everybody in town has about right like okay you're a dwarf you're supposed to be mining like why are you what are you doing here bringing us cabbage this doesn't make sense even though we love your beard and you're a nice guy right yeah. but I've been here you? years <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah so. it comes out and it's like oh the elves should be in the woods why are they doing it? what are yeah. they doing coming in the ship? it's like oh, I tried to help you on the racial stereotyping. And everyone sees me as the really weird dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And we're going to be here same time, same place next week. Maybe we'll start a little bit earlier though, because hopefully we won't have technological difficulties. Um, and otherwise, yeah. I think we'll say bye. And thanks a lot. Um, appreciate it. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Watching. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, let me thank you for shielding me. <laughs> See you all in a week.